with all things that they've done. Uh, just very excited to see kind of where they're going to go from here. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit of a recap for my own sake because obviously we haven't touched this campaign a bit. But welcome guys, welcome everybody. We're continuing on the No Loss Daniel campaign. And we found ourselves in a reasonably good position. Just hearing like a deep bass. Uh, yeah, found ourselves in a reasonably good position last time. Pretty happy with uh, with how things transpired. Um, we can see that my general is still alive. The secondary general that you need, pretty much. We got like and subscribe, aka Daniel, is still alive. Um, we are in the position and situation murdering Boris. We know there's one more armies. We do not know necessarily where Boris is, though. Hey, Countash. So my only worry right now is obviously um, there's a couple things that could happen, right? A couple things could happen. If I start moving to the east. He may very well send uh, people towards the Port of Secrets. So it's very difficult to know the exact movements, the exact correct decisions here. Uh, and obviously in no loss scenarios, it's never good when you're in situations where you have to guess. So to take the guessing away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this Jimbo, the Warmonger, um, and try and get visibility over this side. We've already checked the public order. We know that there's nobody in these areas. Because uh, obviously what you can do is you can easily just test to see how much uh, is actually within them. Uh, by looking at the public order, you can see there's no military presence in there. So we know there's nobody in there. Like, for example, here, we can see military presence of 18. Because I have an army of 18 here. And obviously it divides by the number of settlements you have additionally. Would be good to get Jimbo inside of my main army uh, for a bit more movement. Uh, but I think this may be a situation where I have to kind of lick my wounds a little bit. And Sebastian, thanks for the Prime Man. Much love to you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. This may be a licking the wounds situation slightly. Uh, there is another angle where you basically lure up one of these guys. We can always force march back from here. Um, okay. I'm okay with that. So we know they're not within the vicinity of this area. We do know that this has been resurrected by Archeon. So there's Archeon armies around this area. So that's good information for us at least. We need to capture this settlement. So we need a Zinchin tower ideally. We need a Zinchin settlement, uh, and we can get the Blue Scribes and get Air Cold, which will be really good compliment, funny, funny enough, to Corn. Yeah, I'd never think I'd say that, but a Zinchin legendary hero is an exceptionally good compliment towards Corn esque units because of the fact that he heals them an absolute ton. We do have Chaos Warriors of Corn within our main province. We still own uh, one of the settlements on this side. As you can see, we own Billicus Cliffs. Normally, you have to trade the settlement to keep on Malice's good books. Uh, but for now, the biggest advantage is that he's continuously being brought into wars due to Malekith. And as part of that, I've basically been milking him for money. Uh, so I will always continue to do so. We can see that we obviously have a reasonable amount of aversion there, but if we truly feel like we're in trouble and diplomacy will snowball a little bit, I will then try and attempt to um, send settlements his way, right? Uh, and not be too silly with it. So, let's have a look at what Varg's doing. If we can declare war on you guys. 368. Um, honestly, we'll probably make the money from just eventually gaining peace with them. Uh, as you can see, the Broken Wheel here uh, heavily want peace, but anyone that's at war with Malice is somebody I can't afford not to do. Joins wars and is not even close. Yeah, it's, it is it is so weird that neither of us are close by, yet it's it's almost like having a conversation with one another and being like, yeah, I'd, I'll help you, dude. Yeah, no worries. I'm right there for you, babe. You know, any any situation you get yourself in, I'm I'm there, you know. I'll help you out. I'm nowhere near enough. I'm nowhere near in a position to help him in the slightest. I guess the unfortunate thing is here... I think what I might do is encamp, actually. And then move you over here. I would assume... Which I may be assuming incorrectly here. Uh, that I should be able to move over. Jimbo will give us enough information to see if we need to pull back towards the Port of Secrets. Uh, but my main goal here is to grab some Chaos Warriors and grab one of those Corn Warriors as well. The more Chaos Warriors of Corn we get here, the happier I'll be. 
because fundamentally they are absolutely perfect at tanking all things ranged. Um, so yeah, Jimbo's going to have a little scouting action. Like I said, a shame that I can't put it into my main army because uh, of the additional movement, right? They give you a lot of additional movement. And this means that we obviously are now working towards getting all things within the Nurgle tree because we need the plagues. Getting terror on all my mortal units is very, very, very useful. There's not really that much that we're going to look for additionally. You can see that obviously we have additional strengths against certain factions. I mean, most of the demonic things that we may or may not fight, I don't really mind all too much, if I'm honest. I'm content with the way we have it right now. Uh, and I guess now will be the deciding factor, because unfortunately if I am... Um, if they send an army over to the Port of Secrets, I generally don't think I can get to the Port of Secrets in time. So this is going to be a little bit of a guessing game, but also a bit of an educated guess. Mainly because Boris is actually being attacked by Archeon right now. So it would be very rare for me to see him pushing towards the Port of Secrets. Especially in a situation where we are attacking him at the same time. Because, I mean, the AI obviously has a massive player priority. Um, but you'd be I'd be very shocked to see if he just abandoned everything. Okay, Soul Torture is actually someone we declared war on last turn, which is good that we got the uh, free money from that. So now Jimbo is going to be progressing on this side. Okay, we can see nothing over here thus far. Let's have actually check. Military Presence is actually 6 right now. Oh, okay. So we know where he is. Okay, so this settlement's just been taken down. Uh, Archon has uh, taken it. Now, what... It's been an awkward situation, because now we need to try and run down all the way here. We do know... The thing that surprised me the most, right? If I double-click, that is indicating he at least has a full army, but it really doesn't feel that way. It really does not feel the way. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel that way. Uh, let's just go ahead and merge things, especially since we can save quite a lot of money here. Um... I think we aren't besties with you, are we? I would assume if you were to fight... If I'm in at war and you're next to me, you, you should join me. Uh, let's just take a look at Archeon right now. We actually can't... I think if we trespass through here, they'll be really, really mad at us. Hey, Jimbo. Uh, I'm campaign. Mind draining. Yeah, I'll have to refund pretty much everything regarding that dark. Any campaign requests, I'll have to refund. Um, I just don't have time to do them now, unfortunately. I did not expect to to, uh, to get the job that I did uh, at the time that I did. Yeah, I can't walk through here. I, I don't think I can... Yeah, because I can't ask for treaties. So I don't know if, if me walking in their terrain... Let's see. Yeah, it would count as diplomacy. It would count as a bit of a no-no. I'm going to have to come this way. We're going to walk all the way around. This is really annoying, because if I don't take that settlement, then it means that uh, I'll have very limited access towards this location. Although, the good news is, obviously, we're, um, we're in a situation where, at least, we have a lot less things to worry about, right? I mean, one thing that potentially might be the play now is Throg's still alive, which is going to be interesting. Throg is doing his thing... The way that we've spec Daniel here has allowed us to be more of a diplomacy uh, with obviously the right match as well. So everything regarding respect from the north, so regarding Chaos Warriors, Demons of Chaos, Beastsmen, and Norska will all like me. There is actually merit into going into the Zinchian one to also go into knowing Diplomat as well. Access with Akin to get it with the Vassals. Niski, that makes sense, buddy. Thank you. I think it'll take us a bit of time to make, uh, make him like us there. Because Arkin's not going to take any of these settlements, which means um, I'd have to give it to his vassal, which I don't want to do. Die, Chaos Scum. Hey, Sarah, thanks for the 33 months. Die, Chaos you. Scum. Yeah, I can't trade a settlement to him. That's really unfortunate. Uh, I think the only way that I could actually try and find an angle of declaring war on this guy is if uh, there's somebody that I can mutually speak to just to specifically declare war on the vassal. I believe that's still a thing, where you can declare war through the vassal. So that might be an angle. I mean, the only problem we have now is we generally do need to take more settlements. Um, is That's pretty much when you start making the most money. 
Uh, we do need to go into corn reductions as well, which is right here. So another 15% reductions, which will take this down a good chunk because the majority of my corn units... Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much majority corn, right? Uh, so that's going to be at least a good chunk of change, a couple hundred at least, uh, which will help us a lot. Uh, we're going to chuck Jimbo in the army now as well. Getting access to the settlement will be pretty useful, especially because uh, it has a lot of buildings within there. So it's going to be a very high value sack target if we do appear, you know, take that approach. This is an interesting one in that this has very much changed. Uh, you know, this is a very different campaign experience for me because turn 17, Archeon, typically speaking, doesn't do much. I mean, there's definitely an angle of just murdering Clan Ferric, or just murdering something around the area. Because we definitely need more fights in us. Because Daniel actually scales pretty well with levels, especially because of the fact that you can reduce uh, a lot of threats around you. And increase your income in general. Because the more levels you have, the more you can spec into relevant things that allow you to reduce income of things, right? And then obviously go further towards Undivided, because that does it even further. I think you can get like a 45% reduction of your army cost, and you can probably get things even lower um, for most armies. So you're running around with very cheap compositions. I think we're going to have to be a little bit careful uh, with the Howling Citadel, but I think as long as we have, you know, reasonably strong armies in there. I think the mistake that I made is I should have tried to beeline. Hey, uh, something, something. Yeah, pretty much. Very different. We're, we're going to have to. We're going to have to take it very differently here. I'm so surprised Malice is just sitting there doing nothing. I'm just confused at this point more than anything. Like, should I just go and take the settlements for myself? I can't have trespass though, but I could go in the water and then go around. That wouldn't be the worst idea I've, I've, I've ever had, honestly. Are you military presence still? Yep, military presence of nine, which means they're re recruiting their army, which means the majority of the things that they'll be in there uh, will, will be annoyingly... Um, what we call it? Corsars and stuff. Hey, demon. Yo, Talon. You just beat on a mode? Nice. Well done, buddy. Well done, lad. Okay, that's actually kind of perfect, because I wonder if I can do this. We do have an inactivity, annoyingly, but there's not much we can do about that, unfortunately. The good news is you're, the way that the decaying works is... Um, I wonder how much additional movement that gave us. Because normally it actually does demonstrate how much more you get. But yeah, honor mode is no is no joke. So well done, lad. I think annoyingly I'm gonna have to force march all the way through all these. There's no Zinchin factions to do that. Hey, massive space, much love to you, buddy. Uh, yeah, we need fights, man. We need fights for glory. Like, where's the glory at, boys? Where's the glory at? That's all I gotta say. Your boy needs some glory up in here. So we should have cut off any direction in which you'd expect Boris to move towards this way. I think the way to lock in um, making Malice like me is if he's not trying to take this element, it's just try and take those from him. Honestly. Um, look, this is... This is... This is what we're looking for. This is exactly what we're looking for, boys. This is the reason you declare war on factions miles away from you. This is 2.7k for free. 2.7k just for free, boys. Like, come on. That's gonna that's gonna float me nicely. Hey, Liam. That is gonna float me nicely for a few turns. Oh, 5% movement? Absolutely, always. Consume its heart, baby. Give me that movement range. Why are you stacking up movement nicely? So that'll be a couple turns, so I'm gonna force march. I think. Let me just check his army first. Just need to see if this is a good idea. So it's Patriarchs. I can't tell what level it is. But I can see due to the armor and the speed, it's a low level. I can due to the speed and the armor, it's a low level. I can look at the spells here. It's definitely a low level because of that. Am I going to attack Arkan? I will attack Arkan, just not yet. The reason I'm not attacking him just yet is because he is significantly stronger than me currently. Uh, I intend on attacking him on my terms, right? Upon my terms, when it's the most favorable for me, is when I'll start fighting him. Because he is the victory condition, right? He is part of the victory condition. 
Uh, so I do definitely intend on murdering him. It's just right now I just need to try and get my economy going because if I don't have a secondary army, I'm in a lot of trouble, right? No secondary army equals lots of trouble. So we could greed and go money. Or play it safe and go control. I'll go money. I will actually go money here. It's a shame that the uh, Chaos War Shrine is so bad. It's just one of those things where, in the early stages of the game, Archeon can field a significant amount of armies, where I can't get anywhere near the level of what he can do. Um, and so we will fight him. Just like I said, it's just going to be too difficult right now. Uh, thankfully, we're in a position where we're actually recovering our economy a little bit here. Uh, if I can upgrade this settlement too, very tempted to do so, actually. If I upgrade this one, then I have a way of pretty much guaranteeing him loving us. Wait, we actually have it right now. I mean, logically speaking, right? If I think about this, I think a defensive alliance is troll. The only reason I think defensive alliance is a little bit bad is because of the fact that... Well, if, it, if he's if he's saying this now, I think I need to be a lot... I, I think I can be a lot less worried. We have the option now to get an alliance, but I think... Anything that happens with the Guarding Norska, Throg might win, Throg might lose. But if you click on him right now, let's click on him and then have a look. It's only nine, right? So they approve treaties with me, but that's about it. Maybe there's a chance that... Oh, treaties with. Wait, they've got non-aggression. Throg has a non-aggression with Malice. I've just checked. Look, if you see that, attitude towards treaties with Wintertooth. And you can see the attitude towards has a non-aggression pack symbol there. Only way that falls apart is if Wolfric wins the war against Throg. Yeah, they have no diplomacy contact. Yeah, that's the only way that this falls apart. Uh, you can see strength rank 21 versus strength rank 116. So it looks like he's losing. But it, honestly, at any point, Wolfric can just take down Throg and just win that fight. So I think I'm going to hold off a few turns. I think that's the right play to do. Helling Citadel is going to throw in the Bloodletting garrison and control just in case i would love to be able to upgrade this my goodness it would be so nice to upgrade that but you know realistically it's just not an angle just yet we know that the tower of torment is actually where boris recruits the majority of his units so this is pretty much his recruitment core uh so hopefully we'll be able to attack him before he really starts snowballing up but he doesn't have a high level pay track and he doesn't have boris in his army Obviously, the fight's very, very trivial in the grand scheme of things. I mean, I think on the previous stream, we got very close to losing. Like, very close to losing. And thankfully, we managed to clutch it up. Okay, Blood Brothers is huge. This right here is the best thing we could have actually had access to. Minus 25% upkeep is so good. And what's this one? Raise 6. Sack or raise? Okay, that one's not worth it, but there's another one, I believe. I believe there's another quest that asks you to do that. Because we do need to... We actually need to own this. Oh no, this is just it. Yeah, so sacking those for tiny amounts of glory. Um, yeah, no thank you. Uh, no thank you, boys. Uh, so we need to take this one. We need to start getting our bloodletting snowballing as well. Have they nerfed them to... Have they nerfed the uh, Drozinas to the ground yet? Have they nerfed them like crazy yet? Which is actually kind of... It's actually interesting if they have. Hey, MC, how's the guy cooking? Honestly, not too bad. Mainly doing the scripts at the moment. Problem is, I've been working... And getting used to working again, which is brutal. Have you seen back on this? I use a different strategy and don't have the COC DLC. Been trying to perfect. Ooh, Death's not. Let me know what you've been doing then, lad. Because I'll have to include non-DLC-esque things in there as well. But you, MSI, I'm doing my best, mate. I started a new job to, uh, a couple weeks back. And uh, just getting used to actually, you know, doing things instead of being a streamer. <laughs> yeah, definitely being a streamer is an exceptional blessing. But I just, you know, I couldn't, um, I couldn't make it work. Uh, since it's the last Boris settlement, we're going murdering ourselves, you know. Although I've got the majority, the majority of the, bo the, the like the bedrock of the guide pretty much sorted. Said well, full time work towards January. Ah, fair play, man. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. The role that I'm in is a lot more senior than I'm used to as well, so I'm having to use my brain a lot. 
It's one of those weird things where if you stay at a company long enough, you just know what to do and you don't just think about it. Uh, and then when you're doing something new completely, it just it's a lot of brain power. A lot of brain power is required. But I'm getting there. We're getting there. Right, luckily for us, Boris is in a lot of trouble. Hey, Kellett, good to see you, handsome. Evening. Been a while since I caught a stream, and it's my two-year sub. Nice. Well, two years indeed. Happy anniversary, my friend. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here. As always, Kellett, you know that. A cheeky one in the chat. Hey, Zepka, good to see you, lad. Hey, Monsheath. Look at all the boys hanging out. Appreciate all you guys hanging out, boys. Uh, internal domain knowledge can be if Yeah, for sure. Much love to each and of you, one of you guys hanging out. You know, it's one of those weird things where, um, you know, being a streamer or making content in general, if you stop for a little bit of time, it's like, uh, who's that guy? Who's who's Palsy? Oh, yeah, he does Total War stuff. Don't remember him. You know, it's one of those things where it's, I feel like it's quite easy to be forgotten. <laughs> you know? All right. Zinch or Kizzle or Zinch? I'd check out... If you're playing Kairos... Yeah, Kairos is pretty, it's pretty solid right now. Um, either or. So a guy that said the key to the economy was having high slash corruption everywhere. High Zinch for wins. Corn uh, locations like to protect. I mean... The funny thing is, it's very easy to say that, but... Getting relative amounts of corruption for the for those kinds of things is actually quite difficult to do. Because what that guide isn't telling you is that any type of corruption that you start making counteracts any other corruption, right? You'll basically, by having certain corruption, you'll have a minus five on the rest of it, right? So it's easier said than done, that, honestly. A lot easier said than done. Let me start moving forward. Well, I need to be a wee bit careful with the old wee Jimbo. Can't be losing Jimbo already. Cannot be losing Jimbo already. Uh, let's go kill the Drazina, because we're actually specced out quite nicely for that. Pull you guys back. If I had casting, I could easily start keeping them back up. Gotta be careful. Dogs are really useful here, because they have a lot of damage. And good, thanks for the follow, buddy. Uh, depends, I think, if Legend of Terror would quit. People would still remember them. Yeah, I guess it depends on how long you've been making content and the kind of type of content you make, right? That is for sure. Right. Nice. Should be up to a thousand damage here. And Trazinas typically don't have that much armor. Yo, Mr. Acer, how you doing, you handsome bugger? Hope you are doing wonderful as always, my friend. Oh my goodness, we are being absolutely peppered here. Classic Kislev strategies. Gotta be really careful here. I think I... Do I have... Ah, oh, I don't have healing just yet. Man, that would have been huge if I did. I gotta be a lot, more smart, a lot smarter with my approach sometimes. Because it's one of those things where, in that regard, I should have kind of accounted for the fact that they'd... Um, put a lot of... A, a bit of a box going. Didn't know that, but makes sense. Yeah, it, I mean... It, from a perfect perspective, it's very easy just to say that, right? In a perfect world, it's like, oh yeah, X, Y, Z, this is this is the best thing, right? But gaining Sunesh corruption takes a long time. Like that takes that takes a long, long time to do. Like that's not something you can do very quickly. Building corruption in a province takes a long time, and especially uh, when most things regarding Sunesh are, um, you know, just harder to build because. Building, like, 100% Slanesh Corruption would probably take you 20, 30 turns. And if you're trying to defend the settlements as well, Daniel in general will reduce the corruption too by putting Undivided, because that's what he naturally spreads. Alongside, depending on your, uh, on your um, you know, the relative uh, units within your army too, and, cha and heroes as well. If you have all Slanesh heroes, you can definitely smash it out quickly. Hey, Hamza, I saw your live stream history. Lots of Daniel, you're Daniel Expert. I certainly know a lot about Daniel, yeah. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me, matey. I think probably people in the chat could uh, would be able to answer that as well. Is corruption for demon like vampires? Like battles increase it and other commandments and resources? Yeah, it's very similar. Just him in general walking around will give um, undivided corruption, right? Especially since you can spec into it within his um, undivided tree. 
Because, I mean, he is technically undivided, right? But you can have that flexibility of going into uh, either or. But, yeah, you just got to remember that... Um, yeah. Unless someone shows you their, like, the actual garrisons and shows you their um, settlements, it's hard for me to just be like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's easy just to say that just by default. Yeah. Put, Zinch makes you more money. Uh, Zinch gives you more ammunition uh, for your demon units, you know. Slash gives you more monies. But it's very hard to do, right? Playing a crone. Nice. Join the hammer and anvil. This is a slot in combination with the witches and death tags. Why she hated? Um, I think she's just sort of forgotten about in regards to most of the uh, the Dark Elves. I think when you talk about Dark Elves, you talk about Malekith and you talk about, typically speaking, Malice. And then probably Rakath, right? Nah, Marathi's probably in the contention. Probably Malekith, Marathi, Malice, Rakath. Uh, and then you think about Hellebron, right? She's just not as intuitive and as interesting as the other ones i i feel like you know for me personally i feel like she doesn't have as much spice as everybody else although she's very strong i think people underestimate her right so i don't this is a tier two settlement i would need a tier four capital for me to do what i want to do we do have a 4k sack in here but i'm actually going to take this one um we could go further into corn to allow us to obtain the bonuses of the inventory with all our corn units. We definitely need to go Zinch down at one point, but a minus element is not, not going to be the play. Yeah, we'll go corn just to make sure this um, the garrisons are stronger. Yeah, because we need to we need to take this one, but it's the gyroscope room that we need a Zinchian faction, a Zinchian settlement for. The other characters are so much more interesting from a law perspective too. Yeah, she's vastly different in that respect, right? But yeah, respecting the North and knowing Diplomat are very, very useful. Because Daniel very quickly can can rally himself around pretty much most of the chaos. Alright, so big. We've got Fleshy Abundance now, which is huge. Uh, but yeah, Hamza, if you have any questions, lad, don't hesitate. What we were stressing was mixed provinces as better and solid. So I'll like send you. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's one of those... Uh, I mean, like I said, you know, if you just look at the way that this Individed works, it's like local armies minus three for corruptions, right? So just me having somebody here is giving me minus three corruption. I think it is near enough impossible to have multiple corruptions in one province, right? And then having certain buildings that increase your corruption then impacts your ability to gain corruption... Most of the time in other provinces too, right? Depending on the commandery. Because like, for example, yeah, foster cults in the adjacent provinces um, and things like that. Hey, Alanton. Right. I'm going to try and I'm going to need to finish those uh, Raybone Styles uh, voice lines tomorrow. I've just been so busy. It's been uh, sucky. What was the best dedication and why, according to... I heard Nurgle's the worst. Corn is the best for movement regen. I think Nurgle's probably the second best, depending on from consistency perspective. Uh, early game, pretty much always go Corn because the Chaos Warriors of Corn are just insanely good. Plus, you get a Bloodletting, which thus increases a lot more of your um, growth. Pretty much my early game consists of mainly having a couple of armies to benefit from Bloodletting. If you don't go Corn, you, you delay your ability to upgrade your settlements uh, by a significant amount. Um, right now I have a tier 3 settlement, turn 20, which otherwise would take, like, seven, you know, like 30, 40 turns. You saw Don Fandango playing the Under Champion, we're trying to train it out. Wait, did he have Ray Bronstahl? A lantern, that's pretty dope if he did. If he actually was using Ray Bronstahl, that'd be cool. Um, because, yeah, that was one of the voice acting stuff that I did. I've done a lot of voice acting for the dwarves in that mod as well. Um, but yeah, I feel really bad that, um, yeah, there was additional lines that we wanted to do, but I just, I've just been struggling to get, to get it done. Not early game, final dedications. Oh, undivided is the best, by a long way. Um, late game dedication, undivided is the way to go. There is no justification not to go undivided. Pretty much undivided allows you to have the flexibility of recruiting anything you want, right? Um, 
for example, undivided, like having being undivided, you actually get units faster than you would by being dedicated, which doesn't make sense to me. Don't ask me why that makes sense. It just it just doesn't. Like for example, here, look at this: flying cavalry, three thousand six hundred thirty undivided glory, then three thousand four hundred for that. You know, it's very similar, if not faster. For example, three thousand three hundred for those monetizers of corn. We look over here, and it's three thousand four hundred and ten for the same ones. And then if you look at the very end. You get minus 15% upkeep for our all armies, recruit ranks, recruit re re duration reductions, global recruit duration reductions as well, and then recruitment cost on the top of that at the same time. Which means, funny enough, you can pretty much, alongside your corn uh, bloodletting, you can recruit units that take four turns in one turn. And it's cheaper. It's really cool. But yeah, Undivided is by far the best. I mean, it's just... It, for me, there is no rhyme or you know, there's no real, I guess, justification not to go into it, personally. Right, so we've made a little bit more dollars. We actually have found Astrogoth now. Wait, Boris is still alive. He has a small army somewhere. Which I'm not sure where it is. Hey, Mr. Abby. But yeah, Death's not by all means, matey. If you want to send it to my way, I'll, I'll happily uh, happily look at it. Because then I can answer any further questions that you have. But yeah, I feel like it's very easy on a guide just to say, you know, multi-corruption, you want to do that, it's great. But realistically, it takes a significantly long time to do that. Uh, and it's unrealistic to say in a guide to do that when it's a very difficult thing to get to, right? Hey, Day. But the DLC we review this week, because here we want to capitalize on Easter break. Yeah, for sure. The Jesus of Jeed got nerfed rather than the whole army regen got patched. Ah, that's a classic. That was a that was that was a bug though. That wasn't intentional. So I kind of expected that. That was that was definitely not intentional. Right, so I'm gonna take advantage of the additional So ten more turns, we've got the uh the better cash flow. So we have tempered rage, but none of that's gonna be useful. Let me just check to see if any of this is good. It's so weird that... Why would you have got... Yeah, I suppose the melee attack is alright. Not much of this is going to be wanted to be used. The barrier, you've got to really use a lot of them before it becomes valuable. From an uh, equipment perspective, the Nurgle... Nurgle actually gives you some really, really nice units. Uh, some, some nice equipment. Oversized heavy armor is probably something I should go for, honestly. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for oversized armor to give a stream of corruption. I think it's going to be something that's going to be really useful, especially if we lose the main main lord here. And the good thing is about getting lords like this leveled up, it means that this dude can probably solo defend most places. And so by leveling up these uh, these early game um, lords that snowball like crazy, you know, we're going to be uh, in a good spot. It's just really weird now. The, the situation we found ourselves in... Let me speak to Archeon, see what he has to say. So we've gotten two settlements here. I just need to make sure he doesn't fight me. Oh, I can trade a settlement. Oh, we can get. We can actually give him this. Ooh, okay. Hmm. If I do, if I give him settlements and go for a diplomacy at the same time, it means that this will secure any form of relation with him. But the only quarrel I have with that is I'm gonna want to fight him at some point too. Better items that give it. Yeah, if you dedicate towards it for sure. Uh, hey Adam, how do you steal legendary heroes again? Basically, you need to be you need to have a alliance with that faction, uh, and then as part of having an alliance, you want to borrow the army that has the heroes in it. Make sure they're level twenty with the mortality, get them killed, and then 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 it's yours, Adam. Hundred hours in Baldur's Gate, just so sign another playthrough. Yeah, definitely, Dizzy, definitely. But yeah. Uh, Hamza, I hope that helps. Undivided is by far the best. And the reason for that, like I said, is you just get you get to use everything. So all your army compositions can counter anything in the game because you can build from everything. Whereas if you're if you're going within a dedication towards any of the rest of them, you are locked into that specific dedication, right? You want to do undivided because you can still get all the benefits of up to here with all the rest of them, right? If you do undivided. Whereas if I go corn and I have three thousand corn, the rest is like hundred. That's going to be what it is for the rest of the game. You know, I'll only get I'll only get corn. It just isn't worth doing. 
I think if you really want to dedicate towards one of them, it would probably be, I would argue, Corn would be probably second best. I don't rate Zinch much at all. Probably Nurgle is third, and then, Z and then Zinch, and then probably Slanesh. I think magic eventually starts to become less potent as you're capable of getting, you know, pretty much any magic that you're looking for through the variance of recruitments of these. So you never need to worry too much. I think we've done what we needed to do. I think this settlement specifically, if we want to trade it, we'd have to put a military building in there. Do I need to put a military building here, trade it to Archeon, secure an alliance, never have to worry about fighting him? If I did that, then likely we'll have to fight against Astragoth. Because this is the really weird thing right now. We've pretty much gotten to the point where most of the place, most of the places within the map were actually kind of okay. Went corn once. Don't divide it. Yeah, I don't blame you. Hey, looks. Yeah, let me stick to what I was doing. I'm fine with that. <laughs> But yeah, the Drazinas, I, I was actually quite surprised how strong Drazinas were when they came out. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing well, thank you, man. Work has been interesting. But we're uh, we're getting through it. I mean, uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I really am. So that's a blessing, at least. I suspect that we're not going to have to fight Boris again. Although, it would be a bit of a worry if Boris attacked one of my minor settlements, because I'll have a very hard time beating that. Even with relative strength. This is what I really don't understand. Is I can't gain... I like I, I can't really justify going an item when I can't use them on Daniel. So uh, we've got some network of cabins nearby. We've got hundreds of skulking noblers. Yeah, I call them immediately. Absolutely chop their domiums off. So three grand for getting any type of demonic glory. That's nice. So I can actually trespass to kill this guy who's going towards this settlement, so I guess thank you. Um, now we have a couple of purchases here. I still do not understand why Malice hasn't moved. I'm generally blown away why. I have no understanding as to why he's doing this. So it kind of makes me feel like the smartest thing for me to do probably is just to sail all the way over to the settlements down here. First and foremost, let's grab the things in the ocean. Uh, perform better on the campaign, especially since we're going to be moving a long time. The performing better on the battle only lasts like five turns, typically speaking, so it's probably not going to be worth it. But we might get something decent and we got scammed. Okay, good to know. I mean, sometimes it do be like that, though. Sometimes it really just do be like that. Uh, since everything on towards the eastern side, I'm pretty confident we're secure. Especially if we can start upgrading stuff over this side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take all your items off, matey. And then I'm going to redeploy you. Even though, obviously, right now he's given us 40... How much growth is it? He's given us another 25 growth. But that will dissipate. and di No, that, that's going to go, right? Um, so what we'll do is just respect you for now. As I need that guy redeployed wherever I'm going to need him. Especially in certain places where I can easily put some stuff in there. Do I have anybody that I can recruit that I've already recruited before? I don't. That's unfortunate. Because I would love the ability to get more Cold Warriors here. Uh, but maybe a few turns of me not doing anything might supplement my income enough. Uh, because my goal here is actually to start completely taking all these settlements and then just trading to Malice. Because I can keep Malice on side. And then what I can do there is just leverage uh, Malice here to then batter everyone, all the rest of the Warriors of Chaos. Because how many is there? There's, um... There is Sigvald, and then there's obviously... Um... Valkyr. So that's two of them that we'll need to deal with. And then... Oh, we got Azazel down here as well. So Azazel's not too far away. Heralds of Tempest normally die to Grimgore. And then obviously Arkin will be who we uh, take out ourselves as well. Maybe a full map domination is the way we should do it. Justify it's a good item. 
Yeah, I mean, it has to be a pretty damn spectacular item if, if you're going to take away... If you're not going to give yourself growth. Or, or the glory, excuse me. What if we're doing with Daniel's uh, 30 regiments around, using the emergency stack, and make an hour army? Oh, 100% emergency. It's, uh, this is the one thing that I've often said that's bad about Regents Renowned. And Espen, thanks for the 19 months, buddy. Hey, my guy. How's the new job going, Bay DLC Blankies HMTGHI? It's going well, thank you, bud. I appreciate it, Espen. It's going really well. I, I think this is one of the reasons why I think Regents Renowned are a little bit bad of a mechanic. Because of the fact that I am incentivized to keep them until I need them. Instead of just using cool units, right? Like, I, I wish there was a different way that you could bounce around it, but generally oh my god f5 jesus christ mate can we get some 07s in the chat for the wonderful f5 holy smokes thank you for the 20 gifted subs god damn get some 07s get some love get any emote in there just throw some throw some stuff in the twitch chat boys appreciate y'all jesus mate do appreciate it lad f5 you're an absolute champion hope you're doing well my friend to figure out what yo yeah, oh, hacks oh holding handsome i need to figure out what this Dude is going to do for me. Keymaster. Battery replenishment rate of army. That ain't bad. That's not half bad. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, much love, uh, Liam. Appreciate you again, F5. It's The, the story of F5 always is always so funny because he's just been a legend that has subbed to the channel regarding Prime and just never talks. Like, he just says, I think one day he just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Prime sub to you for as long as I can. And he just has. What a legend. Hope I'm good too. I'm doing well, man. I appreciate it. It was good to play with the boys yesterday. The ball was gate yesterday it was good fun. I missed it. Right, I think we're just going to keep moving towards the west. Like I said, I just need to keep checking if his military presence... I don't know why. Malice's AI must be bugged. This is a really big problem. This is a pretty bad problem right now. Malice just seems to be bugged. So, I mean, it's one of those things where you've got to roll with the punches. you got to you got to understand... This is, I suppose, where skill expression skill expression comes from. And in a lot of ways, um, you know, for certain uh, campaigns, because every experience is a wee bit different. Yeah, he's just sitting in there. He hasn't even got his sorceress in his army. He's single blanked higher than me. All right, you don't need to throw shade like that. Jeez, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have to put a man down when he's already down, you know what I mean? Don't have to kick me while I'm down, lad. Do you know what I mean? Jesus. I'm Daniel. Daniel is... Dan oh, nice. We've got over stream armor. Daniel is weak for so long. It's so sad. Actually, I'm going to put the uh, two-hander on. It's a shame it's not armor-piercing, though. But we can bonk low-armor targets very easily. Uh, physical resistance, cloven hooves, like that. The Gate of Chaos, I thought at one point was pretty good, but uh, it's not as good as I think. Uh, melee defense, seven. Melee defense, melee defense, melee defense. I think melee defense... Additional, additional three... Can't really swing that way. Yeah, we've actually started getting a wee bit more armor now, which is nice. We've gone away from being a very squishy boy. Um, when can we start recruiting? How many? Because I need to stop building things. I'm probably gonna grab somebody in here. Fate of Buna. Problem with Fate of Buna is I'm not gonna get uh, uh, value out of it. I mean, he's one spell. I have stream of corruption now. I have stream of corruption. But yeah, what do you guys think about Regiment's Renown? I honestly am a firm believer that it's just one of those things where you can't justify recruiting them for the most part. You really can't justify recruiting them for the most part. Whereas you might as well keep them as an emergency, I feel like. I, I, I have a hard time using them. Like, all of these were for emergency purposes. Like, the only reason I have regiments around my army now is for emergency. Plus, the aspiring champions are just good, so you'd always recruit them anyway. I could use them in a non-emergency trash army defense situation. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing for me. I can't think of situations where I'm like, do you know what I want to do? Yeah. Have a recruitment, ha have an army of RRRs. I mean, there's certain situations where it's like, oh, I'd really, I really need this in my army, right? Okay, I can't declare war on him just yet. Oh, sorry, uh, Razil. 20 get I mean, you've got to... I mean, it's one of those things where Razzle, 20 gifted subs just come in, so I, said, I had to say thank you. It's international, world-renowned stream superstar and employee of the month. Wait, I'm employee of the month at, at Amazon? Pog? Has it hanging there, battle cheeks, down to the knees, and trumpets swinging in the wind as usual. Yeah, Razzle, much love to you, buddy. Hope you're doing well, lad. 
Yeah, now I'm going to recruit, I think. Now I'm going to recruit another lord in him. Doesn't matter what the lord is, though. Whatever is cheapest, and I'll use them as a... Uh... Oh, yeah, bad hat's nice. Hey, Frey, good to see you, bud. Oh, switchable plagues is huge! That is such good timing. That is such good timing. Let's get uh, Terror in there. Actually, do you know what? A Zinchian faction has very limited um, Terror, but it would get Fear away. Hold on. Do most blues have... Do most blues have Fear? We need to check that. Do, do default blues have Fear? They do. So, ironically enough... Immune to psychology is more effective than plus six leadership. Because I think causes fear is minus eight, isn't it? Also, much love to everyone for the hype train, boys. Much love. Some of them are too strong to use an emergency. That's funny. Spare our eyes if you use the pink or restores ammo. Yeah, the, the storing ammo one is actually bonkers. The exalted one is nutty. The key is to evade conflict with the Dark Elves as long as you can. Pretty much, yep. Pretty much. And you can declare war on these guys turn two for a non-aggression and Malice will love you. It's all about leveraging diplomacy, pretty much. It's a shame that that's how, like, Daniel's campaign boils down to, but it, it really does. Let me do this as well. I'm going to recruit as many as I can. If I can grab... Ah, it's two turns, though, because he has no bloodletting. That's a shame. Fear is minus eight. Yeah, then it's more effective against them. Uh, we could carry some Maras and put them back in the pool as a as a unit as a um, uh oh kind of unit. We'd be saving quite a bit. Yeah, I'll do that. Because this is where the uh, our uh, the these boys comes in. So yeah, causing terror is more effective than the plus six leadership, especially because everything they everything they'll have will have um. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we've spotted where he is. Good to know. Which means we can yoink Cliff of Beast. So this guarantees pretty much one of the settlements we're looking for. Which is the thing that I was trying to do. I was trying to pretty much get one of these settlements. Ooh, that doesn't fill me with happiness. This doesn't fill me with joy. This right here does not fill me with joy. Although we do have a good garrison in there. I have to be very close to what Grigor is doing. Clan Cleric failed miserably. I'm able to speak to you and just say, declare war on you. If I declare war on you at the same time... Wow, he doesn't want me at war with Azag. That's crazy. What are the regiments renowned guys that you'll always recruit? Uh, do you like the way they're recruited with the Lord? Uh, I love the well. Plus they can't be permanently destroyed, which I hate. Yeah, Lee, that's fair play. That is a fair play. I think it's one of the... Yeah, because there's certain regiments around that I'll always recruit. There's just certain RRs, like the Hellfire Rocket Battery for, for Empire, for example. Always. Severed Claw? Yeah, the Severed Claw is too good not to. You're not wrong. I think we've done everything we want to do, because we've got healing here, but we could change it up, because we actually have... Yeah, this... We might want to replace this now, because we've got... Um, Healing through our... Oh, no, we don't have them just... We don't have them army just yet, do we? Or the mage. But, yeah, let's keep an eye on this guy. We're going to hold off recruiting just yet. I think at 2,200 corn uh, glory is the threshold of getting a significantly stronger army. Mm -mm. of Dragon. Yeah, Slash of Dragon is so good. Norskin Ice Hell Cannon. Oh, dude, it's so good. The Hell Cannon for Norska is so good. It's unreal. It's a shame Warriors of Chaos can't get it. Wait, can Warriors of Chaos get it? I think Demons of Chaos can't, but I think Warriors of Chaos might be able to. Non-aggression with Clan Ferric. No, thank you. No need to. So this guy is still staying here. Which is good because I can recruit a lot of units very quickly. Over here. I just have to make some kind of money move, you know? We need to make some money moves. So this is a port, which is good. So that means we can go towards where the port is. And then you can hand over the units. Would be nice to have a mage. And let's run over here. I think we're going to have to put this Zinchian mage in our army. 
I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Court and garrisons are so much stronger as well. It's crazy. What if you could recruit an enemy RR if you defeat their faction? I mean, logically, it kind of makes sense, but you'd, you'd have a hard time forcing, you know, RR Kislevites fighting for chaos and things like that. But then again, needs must, you know? Then again, needs must. Um... I, do you know one quality of life thing that I would love is if you could change the dedication of the fact of this settlement just off the rip. Do you know how in um, like Cathay can change between yin and yang buildings? I would love if you could do something similar here. Because getting high tier settlements is a pain in the nuts. It really is. Heard my voice acting work in the vampire mod. Great work. Oh, man. Much love, Razil. Hope you, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You can steal or RR actually. Or actually stealing. You have to be... Wait, really? My understanding regarding artillery stealing, the way it functions is there's a 10% chance of stealing artillery. But you have to be... It has to be a, a type of unit that is applicable, right? For example, if you're fighting against Empire and your Empire, you can steal mortars, right? If you're fighting against, I think, some time, I, th I think I've seen this. Plague Ball Catapults, you can take them and b they become mortars. So what mod? It was in the um, Champions of Chaos, uh, Champions of Undeath mod, uh, Spencer, I voice acted him. Okay, let's head over here and take Cliff of Beast down. We know his army's over this side, so we have to be careful. What's his overall feelings towards me now? Yeah, we've not really been able to do much. I think there's a chance it'll declare war on us soon, so we have to make sure this is nailed down. We've got to nail this down soon. Having more Chaos Warriors in here helps a lot. Okay, good. Just know where he is. Had a nice guy to RR. Yeah, that would be nice, especially with the with the um, with the new legendary hero. Con Garrison with the Con Garrison building is like 20 units on the tier 3 minus settlement. Yeah, James, it's nuts, right? It's a good thought. Oh, thank you, Raziel. Yeah, honestly, like, the guys making that mod are such legends. It's just, I've, I've felt so bad how busy I've been. Right. Because, like, when they, when we started working together, it was literally as I started getting a, a new job. No, it was like a week before I got the job, so I had to spend time prepping for it and things like that, so yeah. Hopefully he doesn't hate me, because <laughs> it's very delayed. So this is assault units. I don't necessarily mind about the assault units. Ah, it's going to be a lot of furies, isn't it? Which shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem. Only issue is we're going to have minus melee attack. We'll be able to deploy over in the Cliff of Beast if he doesn't move from there. I wonder if it just means that Malus can't win the fight. I wonder if it just got to the point where it was a tr it was a t stalemate because he couldn't do it. Have my first tier 5 settlement, turn 65. No, we'll have it quicker than that. Because of bloodletting. Bloodletting makes it so much so much more trivial. You can get you very quickly, you can do it very quickly. Like you can get bloodletting growth quite quickly. Uh, was it Spencer? Who was the characters that they've got? They might not have the character I voice acted. I was Rayborn style. The AI being passive AF. I'm surprised. Yeah, I swear this is never a thing. Like from my from from memory, like AI is normally actually r ridiculously aggressive. I mean, this in my eyes is a problem, right? What do you guys think? I think it's a bit of a problem if if the AI is playing as passively as this. Like, this is not expected behavior. Malice is turn 25. Turn 25 turns just sitting in Blackrock. Well, 24, excuse me. And then now all I'm going to do is take these settlements and just trade, him to hi trade them to him. Make him my best friend and then just move towards the uh, the west. I mean, we can very easily make these settlements unbelievably tanky. Very easily. Plus, it means that we can get a lot of monies. Ooh, hold on, folks. Not very happy that I can't see where this guy went. I will cut your legs. Let me try and see if I can see him. 
Mildred's presence of five. He'll be in here then. Okay, that's good. Good. Nice. Beautiful. Remember the name? Uh, Carries of they have uh, except the main guy since uh, things in the background. It's fair play, so yeah, it was. It's Rave Von Style that I've um, voice acted in that mod. Rave Von Style. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting doing a vampire noise after just doing dwarf noises non uh, constantly. This agreement makes sense because I'm about to take all your stuff. Mel seems so Mel survived. Maybe he's um, he's always that passive, uh, Michael. Yeah, I mean potentially so. Who would want? I think uh, corn factions because there's a corn faction that likes us because we got a peace agreement with them. Upgrade any settlement to tier five. That's hard to do. Honestly, it makes me want to walk towards this guy because I know he's in here. Um, we'll go melee defense. Physical resistance is not very useful against Sinchian factions. Wait, can I attack this element? Hold on. If I can attack that element, I don't think I can. Only problem is attacking this one means this is very much open to be attacked by this dude. But I'm fine. I'll, I'll take what I can. Also, it gives us the ability to, to get some more recruitment down here. I'm going to go corn. He's going to attack my capital. Ah, oh, he won't be able to. He won't be able to take it. Ah, shoot. I should have sacked it first. It's too, like, even though it's very few units, the Forest of Decay specifically, so this is probably something that you guys don't don't necessarily know because you might not have played Daniel too much. The Forest of Decay has the best towers in the game at tier 1. It's the way they tried to balance Daniel. I kid you not. I don't know if this, uh, I think this might break the uh, break towers you have in game. But you do 500 damage from the get-go, so he has pretty much the strongest Nurgle towers instantly. So it's 100% never worth. Um, it's not worth trying to change that. Just let it be. Let it do its thing. Let it cook, as it were. Let it cook. Right. So around on the case uh, No, I'm just extremely... Uh, I've Honestly, all the factions... All the times that I've played Daniel in recent times, Malice has done exceptionally well. Like, he's done really well. This is very strange for me to be in a situation like this. Very strange in a, uh, uh, to be in this situation. But I ain't gonna complain. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't complaining. Um, I've got to be slightly careful about the fights to come, though. I intend on baiting him out. But we're going to find the right way of doing it. Because the two-handed is going to be fantastic to kill him. To kill their lord. But uh, we'll see. Also, I feel like the um, all the unique relevant resort, all the luxury resources, excuse me, should actually give you something. They should do stuff, for sure. Right, just saved. I have to keep them because someone named them. That's sort of the law around these parts. If you name something, I can I have to keep them alive if I have the capacity to do so. So this is a very different experience from what I'm used to. Let me check out Archeon. He is starting to hate us a bit here. Ah, that's why Clan Ferric is hating us. That is kind of brutal. Um, that makes sense. I don't think I can do that. I'll let him do his own thing. We'll let him do his thing. If Arkham declares war on us, we have a very, very large buffer uh, before we can get. We need to go back. And we're getting to the point where we can recruit another army soon, too. We're getting very close. I, as long as Arkham's fighting things that are not me, as soon as I get Daniel to the point where he's leveled up to have um, clone reductions and potentially start to be undivided to dedication, uh, I'm completely fine with it. It's just you got to be careful with what settlements you're then obtaining. I'd be very surprised if, if, he, if he remotely attempts to do anything. You guys want a non-aggression, but I don't want to do that. Especially since you're fighting Varg. Hopefully Varg's going to get either confederated by being beaten up. 
Uh, we're still in the situation where, fingers crossed regarding... Hold on. Oh, the Swiss Tower's here. What will I do for the Blood God? Give him your skull. How about that? <laughs> How about those apples? I'm going to give him your skull by killing you. Um, Mass Blunt Blade? Yeah. It's crazy to me how little he's doing right now. All right, for the sake of my bloodletting, I have to move up. Let me go in camp, because it'll give us some leadership and uh, whatnot. And I'm also going to throw in the Herald of Nurgle, just in case. As if this army, if this gets attacked, uh, we'll be fine. Because we're going to do Rancid Visitation, Stream of Nurgle, blah, 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 and Fussy Abundance. So now if this element gets attacked, we have the Regiment's Renown, and we have this guy that will solo it because of the Rancid Visitations. Uh, we have the Metal Mage in our army now, which is fantastic against pretty much anything. Um... I'm just shocked that Balas is doing this. It's it's kind of annoying, I'm not going to lie. In a lot of ways, it's annoying that he's doing this, but I think as part of any Total War play, you've got to be mindful about your um, your approach into most things. Because the second I'm undivided, uh, dedicated, I can then start having more armies. And that means I should have the capacity and the uh, economy to deal with them. How many lost so far, Gorg? What, as in campaign restarts? In, the, in this campaign uh, thus far, we've got no losses at the moment. No losses at the moment. Uh, but we did one restart because uh, I was surprised by the cheats that AI gets on Legendary, honestly. I think that's probably the easiest way to describe it. I was pretty surprised. Do you know what? I might just kill Malice and take the reliability hit. I actually don't hate that idea. I really don't hate that idea at all, actually. What would you guys do? Should we kill Malice? Get him out of the way? Or use him as a puppet to help me kill the rest of the chaos around the area? Interesting strategy. We'll have to get... We'll, we'll be very low reliability. But that'll recover over a couple... T like 10 to 20 turns. Might impact us pretty heavily. Wow, Azazel's dead already. Vassalize him. Well Ooh, if I attack his settlement, can I vassalize him? If he's on his last settlement, you can vassalize, right? Wow, he didn't even try and ambush me here. Okay, he's got a lot of magic, though. We've got to be really careful. Okay, this is going to be a really tough fight. Let me think about this one. So we can see this general here, very squishy. So we can go with hefty amounts of damage. Decent amount of physical resistance. Do we have magical attacks? We do, so we'll have a lot of damage there. Hmm. Would I want to then go into a hand weapon and get the shield? It's only 24% block chance. It might be worthwhile. It could be worthwhile. So this is 607. This is 608. We're going to Unholy Sword. And then... Yeah, we will use the shield. Because I think we should still be okay killing him. Uh, so now we've got some block chance. A bit more armor. We know that there's a lot of blues here. I just think we'll be able to storm him down, though. Just delay Daniel's approach. And then wait for the perfect time, I think is the... I honestly think we don't need to worry too much. We're trying to cook a bit too hard here, I think. I think we're trying to cook a bit too hard. Yeah, look at that. Not close. Low. We have terror. Demons can't be feared, but we counteract their fear. This is the reason we did it, right? So, you uh, this is actually quite a good l uh, learning point. So, the second you unlock the plagues, there's a lot of variant things that you can do. You can obviously do leadership plus six per army for everything. But you've got to remember, all demonic units, typically speaking, have fear. And since my guys don't have fear by default, they can be feared. And fear means this would be plus six. Uh, plus, uh, it's minus 8 leadership from fear. The leadership we gain is plus 6, but by doing terror, we ba we gain plus 2. Because we counteract the fear, instead of taking the leadership plus 6. Because you do plus 6 and then minus 8, terror just does 
standard that. It just flatlines it. So you gain two value. I hope I described that correctly. <laughs> yeah. Want to cook a bird? I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to eating some chicken. Honestly, I am such a fat ass that me saying that makes me want to order KFC. How bad is that? Mate, I've put on so much weight because of, like, covid -y things. Jesus. It's so bad. I mean, F5 with 20 gifted subs earlier. Do you know what I mean? He's paid for it. It's free, basically, at that point. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it kind of would be criminal not to buy it, honestly. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, stars aligned, honestly. Stars aligned. Righty who. <laughs> Let's get my army across here. So these boys are the ones that will uh, never die. And they're going to be insanely goated. We have melee reductions and leadership reductions due to the fact that our... Uh, no, it's just melee reductions, excuse me. Leadership reductions is due to legendary difficulty. 35 compared to 28. So I'm actually going to get these guys a little bit further back. Great in Kentucky. Why, why is it so good in Kentucky? Is it just the way that... I've never been to Kentucky, you know. Your boy has never been. Alright, so we'll get all the lads in front. Just tell them to run in, honestly. This is corn, boys. It's not as much higher fare. Alright, now we can just do this. We have stream of corruption. Bring my heroes up. I will batter this guy like no tomorrow. I heard it's really good in other countries. It's good in England, honestly. I suppose, as with anything, it depends where you go, right? Like, have you guys experienced a situation where you've gone, you know, let's say you've gone to, I don't know, uh, a takeaway place, like McDonald's, for example, and then you go to a different town, and then you have the same thing? Might be a little bit different, you know? Might not be as tasty. I've had that happen a fair amount of times. Like, the taste and the quality is, like, significantly less. Just depends where you are, I guess. Also, I need to avoid... Oh, he's metal magic. I forgot he's metal magic, which helps a lot, actually. This dude being metal mage instead of being Zinshin helps a lot, because otherwise he'd just be blue firing his Zinshin me right now. He'd be blue firing of Zinshin me a lot. I'm going to pull my uh, pull the lads back a little bit. Uh, curse our mortal units in being extremely swift. It's not their fault. They're, uh, they're absolute athletes. Now we can set anything up. Let me look for spells. So they do try and avoid them heavily still. I... I think I, I have a relatively hard time believing that, you know, somebody that's seeing an artillery strike come above them and they can know very, very easily where that's going. I have a hard time believing they could do that. It's like, you look into the sky, you see a mortar coming your way, and you're like, do you know what? That is precisely going to land approximately 17 degrees that way, and then run away from it. And Johans, what's up, dude? Like, I have a hard time believing that, right? So it doesn't make much sense. Hans, how's your... Um, you've been doing um, AoE 4, right? How's your grind to being pro on that one? I used to play a lot of uh, Age of Empires 2, but never did um, never did 4 properly, anyway. Yeah, the Metal Magic will suck over there, but it should be our lens. Um, I think this is going to be a case, a classic case of consolidating my forces to push them back as much as we can. And then we can just look for spells like this. Honestly, they'll just win in melee anyway. I don't need to worry too much. Macro's not your strong suit? That's fair, man. He's a pro in the making. I think he's trying, lad. I think he's trying. And Rat Monster, thanks for the prime, dude. Appreciate you. Because I would have loved to play more Realms of Ruin. Because I got to the point where I was ranked 4 on the ladder of um, Realms of Ruin. Like, I was 4th in the world. And then... Yeah, a lot of bad decisions from the dev sides. Made me stop playing. Because I think at one point, I had more viewers than the game had in total. <laughs> you know? And I was like, come on. Go to I-72 this month? What, in Insomnia? And funny enough, I actually competed at an Insomnia before. A League of Legends tournament at Insomnia. It was I-56. I did a League tournament. Back when I was semi-pro. 
back into the day. But no, I, I work full time now, so uh, I'll have a hard time doing stuff like that, unfortunately. Let's move my mage over here to stop this stop this blob doing tons of damage to us. Although, we are holding the line. Dead General's getting his butt kicked, too. Thankfully, we've uh, held the line regarding the ammunition. Honestly, these Chaos Warriors are just absolutely incredible. We got the Severing Champion, the Severed Claw Champion as well, doing tons of work. Beautiful. Love this game. Me too, man. Me too. I might go. I'll probably be going to TwitchCon, depending where it is. But I, I don't know what the uh, the dealio is regarding um, PTO at my new place yet. I've only been there for a couple weeks. I've only been there for a few weeks. You don't want to start a new job and be like, yeah, can I have uh, a couple of weeks off PTO, please? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. It's like, oh, why, what, for what reason? Uh, gaming things? I mean, business development opportunities. Yeah, really wanting to uh, to learn. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Now, nah, in fairness, my uh, my current boss knows all about the streaming and the gaming and stuff. Did I tell them during the interview? Yeah, I know. I didn't know. It's one of those things where I'm like... I'm not sure about you guys, but this is 100% me. I 100% have become more introverted during COVID. 100%. I used to be really extroverted. Really extroverted. But as I've as I've done like more remote work, as I've done uh, as I've just stayed inside more, I have definitely become way more introverted than I have have been. Like I used to be able to like go outside and just talk to anybody and just do all that kind of stuff. And now if I think about going to speak to somebody, I'm like, oof, that's tough. Do you know what I mean? That's that's a lot of work. I mean, I'm going to be tired after that. <laughs> I'm going to get tired there if I speak to a human being outside. I'm actually when I party or at work. Yeah, a lantern, same for me. A corn run, interesting. You matter? Yeah, I love corn runs. It's not, we're not dedicated to corn yet, though. Introverted, always have been. Yeah. It was so funny that one of my mates... Um, was talking to me. Ooh, do I go Zinshin here? Now, we'll probably take... Um, we'll probably take... Who, what we call it? Heart. Hey, babe. Thanks for the 41 months. We'll probably take... Um, Mouse Settlement. Make that the Zinshin one. Let's keep going to corn. Kobe got you extroverted? Really? How did that happen? If you don't mind me asking. Wow, he has no dreads. This is so free. Oh my god, I have to do it. We're killing Malice, boys. We're killing Malice. I've decided. No shot. We don't kill him here. Like, I'd have to be insane. Like, I'll take the reliability hit. 100%. We're 100% taking the reliability hit here. Like, I don't give a damn. Oh, I should have taken replenishment. Hold on. Let me check something. 100 million percent. This is the worthwhile doing. Only issue is with getting a bit of a reliability hit. It makes me more likely to be attacked. Holy ball sack. 26? <laughs> 1.5k. I'm going to squeeze out more. This is using the diplomacy, right? So if you guys don't know, Archeon right now will probably have 1600. 1.6k. But you can go into payments and then request more money because this is technically an infinite amount of money. I kid you not. This is technically an infinite amount of money. If you have enough of a Diplomacy Treaty bonus with whatever you're doing with them, you could literally make a certain faction broke by, like, what? Millions, if you could. If you had enough to offer it, 100%, you could do millions. Right, yeah, I'll trade that 100%. And then now we're going to go kill Malice next turn. Demon Wizards uh, now have Replenishment. I see, but I don't want Replenishment just yet. I need spells for the uh, for the battle to come. As metal magic is uh, is needed to get them off the walls. Stream of corruption doesn't work on walls. Let me do this, do this, do this. Merge all these boys. Merge all the lads. And then we're going to do uh, the old corny corruption. Uh, corn recruitment. Uh, the conference, give me the conference, talk to people later. Oh, you matter. That's awesome, man. I'm very happy for you, buddy. That's dope. So that is always dope. 
you know, when you uh, you gain, you know, you find confidence in that situation. I think I definitely, like, especially during COVID stuff. No, during college, excuse me. During college, I definitely, you know, learned to be more confident. I kind of came out of my shell, as it were. You know, your boy came out of his shell, as it were. Alright. Um... Yeah, I am thinking that we definitely are in a reasonable spot here. I think it's worth taking tanking the reliability here. My only issue is, will this guy siege this? Can the AI's Black Ark siege? I actually generally don't know the answer to that. Have, have we killed the faction that was here, or is that army still around? Let's check. Yeah, the army's still around somewhere. That's a little annoying. That is a little bit annoying. I can't lie to you, boys. Can I run? I can force match. That's fine. You're a prime? Yeah, Bandit. Thanks for the prime. Who's man. a prime? Dot you are a prime laughing face. <laughs> yeah, most love, Bandit. I hope you're doing well. Right. I think if I were to... Yeah, my only worry is if I do that over there. No, I'm going to sit inside the settlement. I don't want to be ambushed. I'm surprised how trash his army is. He is fully possessed. He is full possession. Is there any Daniel items that gives me the ability to, like, Spirit Leech him, for example? Do I have Spirit Leech currently? Because that would go hard. <laughs> Life leeching. I thought it was Spirit Leech for a second then. No, Fate of Buna is only for inventory. Fate of Buna is inventory. It's not for... Um, not for Lords, unfortunately. You believe it's an arm. Interesting. Maybe I just don't have it then. Blessing Shard's interesting. I wish I could search. I think it's such a bad thing you don't have the search function in here. Like, to say there's so many things I can't search is such a... such a, a little bit of an L, not gonna lie. Oh, shoot! It's, Nur it's Nurgle. It is Nurgle. Woot woot, I made another one. Yo, oh, Helic, how are we doing your hands and bugger? Thanks for the tier two going above and beyond, man. I appreciate you. Hope you're doing well, my friend. So it is Nurgle. But it's too late. We can't go to we can't wait that long, right? We can't wait that long. Use the Nurgle Lord. I need him to defend the settlement to the west. Because this... I don't know where the Zinchian dude is. I really hope he attacked one of my settlements now. Yeah, he's just wandering about. Unless he's been... Ooh, Varg's been competitive about Imric. Okay, Broken Wheel's now dead. Good, someone's killed them. Oh, man. Oh, dude, this is too tempting. Oh, it's just too tempting not to do it. I mean, I feel like... It's so annoying that that guy... I could delay it one turn... Guys, do do me a favor. Do me a favor. This is this is a community right here. As a community, what we're thinking? Type one in the chat if you think we should uh, wait one turn to bring over this mage. Type two if we attack now. One if we should delay. Two if we attack now. Because I can pretty much guarantee Malice's death here if I if I um delay it. Are you guys all thinking delay it? Interesting. You guys are all ones to delay. I think it does make sense. A lot of you all saying it's delay. Okay. I can reach if I do that, right? A good plan, apparently executed. That's a perfect plan. Execute next week. Oh, wait. Did I say two was attacked now? 
Wait, did I say delay? Uh, delay to his attack. Okay, to his attack. Okay. Okay, you guys want to attack straight away. But he's at war with exiles of the heck. How much are you going to give me for that? It's not worth it. Right, I'll attack now then. It's tier 4. It's got some bloody good units in it. Well, time to throw, boys. Time to throw it all away. Decisive defeat, you say. I'm honestly, I, I believe it, honestly. I believe it because I attack straight away like an idiot. Oh, okay, let me think. How can I, why can I, I'm getting rid of the dogs, I have to. Hmm. Oh wow, Spree Vancy gives a lot of bonuses. The dog hate it. I need to have better units, otherwise I'm screwed. In a siege, who's gonna give the most value? Probably either the mirror guards or the chaos spawns. They have a lot of ranged. It's the Mirror Guards. The reason why it's the Mirror Guards is because they've got a lot of Dread Spears. Is there any way I can make my armor better? Is there things that I can do to make my armor better? Transmutation of lead is, is useless. Fit of Buna is too expensive. Charge bonus allows us to cycle charge in. I have no Nurgle magic to heal me apart from the Gorth East helmet. Forbidden. Beneath me. Futile. Right, content's sake. I'll have to put Lord here as well. It's a shame I don't, have I don't have mass chaos warriors. If I did, I'd be a lot more confident. My only problem is that the K the all the army abilities are going to do a lot of damage to me. Like, nine abilities here is going to do a lot of damage to my army. Oh, what would have been smarter as well? Oh, this would have been so much smarter. This would have been big five head. If I delayed it one turn, put an army in here, attack the Admiral, kill the Admiral. Oh, that would have been so much smarter. Holy crap. If I waited one turn. Hey, sometimes I do like that, though. Hey. Stream of Corruption, Searing Doom. Sure. Alright, here we go. We may fail the campaign right here, right now. But, as we know, you live and you learn, my friends. You live and you learn. Um, mainly since there's Red Spears, I'm not worried at all about cycling in with Daniel for that. It's just the range units we have to deal with first. I think the towers shouldn't be particularly too incredible either, hopefully. Uh, but we can certainly have a look at what's going on here. The Scourge Chariots are going to be a problem, so is the Medusa, actually. The Medusa is going to be really annoying because I have no range for it. And if I allow it to get to the point where it can shoot Daniel, the Medusa will do a lot of damage, right? Like a lot of damage. The Severing cha the Severed Claw Champions will be able to be... will will pretty much kill Malice as well. So i got to remember that. The towers themselves are, are very low tier, which is good. It's one big win. Um, who does not get the... So just need the special fortress of chaos locations. You mainly fight battles like this, honestly. Uh, pretty much most of the siege defenses you'll do is this uh, this map. I think it's standardized across the majority of the settlements that you have. Where should you go with your campaign, Kildura? Um, normally, you want to focus on befriending Malice. Go to the east to kill those two mana um, chaos factions. And then you can either focus on befriending Archon, going south and just murdering the Empire and Kislev. Or you can um, go all the way west. There's a couple approaches. A couple approaches. Mm. 
That's head of your choice, you matter. Yeah, it depends. It's one of those things where I don't have uh, I don't have a lot unlocked right now, so my options are quite limited. Um, how much value do I think I can get with Daniel? If I can figure out where they are, probably quite a lot. Can I see pot pies or eight bucks? Wait, what's a pot pie? I don't think we have pot pies here. I'm going to hide the majority of my units away from the Black Ark. One thing I'm wondering is if I put all my units in, in the uh, hidden here, will the Black Ark poo pie? No, pot pie. P O T. I mean, Michael, the things you end up, you, you know, you go around eating is, is up to you, pal. I mean, if you like eating poo pies, pal means. I'm curious to see if the Black Ark will attack us. Like, will attack Daniel specifically. And now I see where the majority of their range units are. Oh, they're already running away. Ooh, my only issue is if I move my mage out there, will my mage moving like that... Oh my god, this is huge. Huge damage. You don't know how to speak it? No, no worries, man. You are not a problem, my dude. Oh my god, am I going to yeet into the... <laughs> See you later, Ned! Bon voyage! <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Just yeeted her into the lava. It's the first time I've seen that happen. That is legit the first time I've seen that happen. That was brilliant. That it was that was absolutely brilliant. I've never seen that happen before. All was gated. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't even know that was a thing. Neither did I, bud. Neither did I. That's the first time in probably 6,000 hours that I've seen that happen. Legit had no clue that it was a thing. Beautiful. It's one of the ranged annoyances dead. Because if it if it goes down to pure melee, we'll win this hundred percent. If it's a pure melee fest, there's nothing that he can do here. Daniel can definitely tank the majority of these dread spears. Double mortis engine with gore feast. Yeah. Uh, would that hero die if it hit the ground and not the lava? No, it wouldn't die if you hit the ground. You've got to hit the lava. Uh, heroes and lords hitting grounds doesn't kill them annoyingly. It's very big, sad, but it's true. Have you heard of seeing how build misses are super good right now in terms of missile damage output? Yeah, they're crazy strong. I I've uh, I've been fighting them. I've fought a fair few uh, on one of my da uh, Daniel campaigns, and it was like a doom stack of them, and they legit smoked Daniel. Like crazy levels of DPS against me. It was it was mental. Okay, nice. Look at this double mortis engine, baby. Just rotted him down. Um. We know there's shade somewhere, so we're going to be careful of that. What's a Mortis Engine? Basically, anything that does um, AoE damage when you're in combat is what a Mortis Engine is. It's like it's a unit for the vampires, but it's very easy to describe, you know, the functionality kind of thing. So whenever you do damage in an AoE in melee, I often just describe it like that. I don't think I'm happy with Daniel... Fighting the uh, the Dread Spears too much. Wasn't a big fan of that. Also, the Black Arcs aren't doing anything, which is big sad too. Okay, the smartest thing actually to, for me to do then is to send out the Aspiring Champions and hope they just keep casting into them. Because if they keep casting into the Aspiring Champions, that means that um, they can just tank it for the for the lower price of free. Plus, if we get close to losing them, I'll just use the, uh, this spell. Yeah, my only issue is obviously uh, we don't have an awful lot of healing available to us. But anytime we have opportunities to do this for freeze, for the low, low price of free, I'll do it. I can see the uh, melee specialist. Can't remember the, what they called again. What are these guys called again? Something ma are they something master? 
can't even remember their names. One of you guys are going to say it, and I'm going to be like, oh my god, of course. But they were insanely good at anti-large with AP, so I can't really mess with that. Oh shoot, I have 55 minutes, I've just remembered. I'm hoping the Black Ark does spells into the Aspiring Champions. We'll see that. I'm sort of trying to bait them out. Also, I'm going to try and continuously keep cycling around here. If I could just cycle charge onto the Dread Spears up here, I don't think Gorthys properly works. It's, normally, it's kind of bugged. I'm going to play with unlimited time. It's a good point. It's a good question. Uh, I think I've just always had it to set. I think it's default set to 60 minutes, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, I think by default it is. Hey, uh, Jacob. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. It's cycle charge over here. Knock off entities. And then pull them out. We just want to basically leverage that as much as possible here. Wait, is he bugged? No, he was just starstruck by Jacob coming into the chat, it seems. Uh, Daniel, what are you doing? Okay, there you go. Kicking a lot of the buggers off. Okay, gotta be careful with the, uh, the attacks. No, the turning arc is garbage. We can take a lot of damage. Oh, okay, good. I'm really trying to get rid of these range units, man. Turn away from that. Boom, neo this. Neo up in here. That's all I gotta say, baby. That's all I gotta say. So many dreams about Skyburn getting his wings back. He wishes. Do fascination over here, honestly. I mean, he was quite literally thrown through the Earth's core for days. So the likelihood of him getting his, uh, his wings back is pretty damn slim, unfortunately, for him. I mean, he was, he used to be able to fly, like, um, like you'd expect anyone, really. Like, you'd expect him as an exalted bloodthirster to, to do. But he was a bad boy. He was a naughty boy. It was mainly because he attacked Korn from behind. And Korn hates cowardice. Not a big fan of folks that are cowardly. So you're still saying there's a chance? Yeah, do you know what? Why not give him the slim pickings of hope? The slim, slim pickings of hope. Is it still a demon he could perform? True. I think, you know, it's one of those things where he's desperate. Well, the thing is, he doesn't know what he's doing wrong, right? you got to remember, he doesn't know what he's done wrong. So do remember that, right? That's one of the biggest things that probably potentially people may forget. He doesn't know what he's done wrong. And as part of not knowing what he's done wrong, you know... It's one of those interesting things where it's a situation where how can he redeem himself if, if he doesn't know what he's done wrong? And that's one of his main problems. But if I would do it most in a different thing. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely just... We're in a situation where we're in a, a no-loss, so I have to play it as smart as I physically can, right? We basically have to be a bit of a gamer here, unfortunately. Hagadath Executors have pretty okay stat lines, so I've got to be careful. Although they may come into the uh, the Thunderdome of AoE, and they have. They'll struggle with getting damage off on me. Whole sneak attack was an interesting plot, wasn't it, Jonathan? It was indeed, matey, yep. It was indeed a Zinchian plot. Basically, it's what Zinch... Zinch convinced him to do so, right? Zinch convinced him it was a good idea to attack Korn from behind. And then anybody with that half a brain cell would understand that Korn is literally the size of mountains, right? He is not somebody that would uh, would go down lightly, even if attacked from behind. You know, Scarbrand, is, he's not the strongest fighter. Like, for example, you know, you could argue that Setra could beat Scarbrand in a fight. And I wouldn't disagree with you if you said that, you know? I think he, typically speaking, is pretty lackluster for the most part. Although, in-game, he is represented as, like, as this, like, demigod, basically. In lore, he's not as good, he's not as strong as potentially he may uh, appear to be in game. Um, okay, this is super useful that Fascination has come in at this point. 
as that. And that's going to help a lot. And, uh, okay, no, thanks for the follow, buddy. Okay, that terror is going to deal with these guys because they're going to get absolutely smoked with fascination here. As long as we're on the walls, their master can't hit us. Oh, it's a master, isn't it? Oh, for God's sake, I forgot I had the... I had the oh, my, Pete, I thought you did the copy pasta. I thought you did the copy pasta for a second, though. We, we do have an SMH Max, um, etc. Which has a cooldown on it, because otherwise people will spam it. <laughs> uh, Teclas could beat Scarbrand in an Amaracing competition. Absolutely not. Teclas's bones are so weak. It's two T's locks. Cetra's bo uh, His bones are so unbelievably weak, you gotta remember. That's one of the things he was cursed with. You know, all of, um... An Aryan's children have some form of negative thing towards them, right? Such as the girl. I mean, I'll give you that. Such as pretty damn cool. I will give you that. All right, I need to start taking down this gate. I think I'm gonna go melee mode, beat the gate down while we're doing all this because we've killed three four hundred and thirty-four. I mean, keep in mind, the things we knock off don't count towards my kills either. Like Valkyrie with the Wizard around me. Well, the, the ironic thing with uh, Valkyrie and the Wizards is... Um, Korn is... Like, Valkyrie is Korn's lover, right? And obviously, if you know about Korn in general, he despises magic. He absolutely hates magic. And so it's a very rare thing to... Exp like, within the game... You know... Hey, Scott, good to see you, handsome. It's very strange to see somebody utilizing magic, even though his lo her lover despises all forms of magic. Um, and so it's kind of ironic using magic with Valkyrie, right? It's, it's kind of ironic that you're able to use it. I'm starting to think that the bloody Black Ark isn't here. Valkyrie is the lover of corn. Indeed, yep. Valkyrie is the lover of corn. Fun fact, Valkyr um, actually died at one point, and Korn basically like, was in such despair, he screamed so loud it resurrected her. Which is a, it's, it's pretty damn dumb, but it's, uh, it's funny that that's what happened. Yeah, literally um, screamed out in pure agony and resurrected. But the, 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 the strange thing there is... Oh, shoot, this is not good. I don't want to be shot up for the towers for no reason. Okay, here's the Black Ark stuff already. Yeah, look at that. Look at those Black Ark spells already. We knew this was going to happen, but we're doing it in trees, so it's not, bad. it's not as bad. Even corn can be whipped. <laughs> Of all things to take from that. I love that as that's what you come up with. Content to his wife too? Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of would. Valkyrie's an absolute unit. Valkyrie, low-key, kind of a unit. Am I addicted to Daniel now, Chess? Nah, I wouldn't say so. It's just I have very little time to play the game, and obviously I've dedicated myself to playing Daniel in recent times, and I want to make sure to get as much value for you guys as I possibly can do. If that means playing Daniel a lot, so be it. Right, so Mon's Chief, we are ordering... We're ordering KFC, by the way. Give me a sec, guys. I'm still going to order KFC. Anyone... Any recommendations, guys? What at KFC would you guys get? Just going to quickly buy KFC. Love the content. Much love too, man. Appreciate it. Days, phase one of Daniel Addiction's denial. Kairos fried chicken. Yeah, maybe that's what we should call it. Got a KFC burger? Come on. The chicken... Okay, guys. Hey, some of them. Family share bucket for me to, sh to not share. How much are the family share buckets? Depends on how big the one is. Like, a dipping bonus one's 23 quid. What's that all about? I usually go with the bonus banquet. Quite a big fan of the bonus banquet. Like 30 quid. The chicken sandwich is 30 quid. If the chicken sandwich is 30 quid, you go in the wrong place there. I tell you, Jesus. Popeyes of a KFC. We don't have Popeyes in England, unfortunately. So I'm going to go with a twisted wrap. I like the wrap. Though. 
Love the gravy at KFC, man. The gravy goes so hard. The gravy at KFC goes so hard. Get it with bacon and cheese, you can't in England. I feel like England definitely um, misses out. Open one in Manchester recently. Oh, nice. I'm not that far from Manchester. Well, a couple of hours. But it's not too bad. I swear Manchester is becoming the new hub of food in England. Like, well and truly, there's so much good food in, in Manchester. It's crazy. I'm, I'm constantly see, I like seeing people like talk about how good the food is there. And I'm like, I want that. Go mention Wingstop. Wingstop goes hard. I wish I could have more of it. Oh my god. I took too long to order, I think. I can't add any more items in. Oh no, I can. Just some of the things aren't available. Schemazed. Absolutely schemazed. This is good enough. Sorry, guys. I do apologize about the delay. Yeah, there you go. Food has been secured. It's kind of mental how good Daniel is at taking these settlements down. If I go towards the Black Air Corsairs, Black Air Corsairs, we can crush them. Okay, here we go. Oh my god, thank god. Run away! Wait, Barrier has just basically tanked all of that. Mate, we're just tanking all the Black Ark stuff by just letting them do bad hits. Sending a will up. Family Bucket, just a suggestion for one person. True. I agree. I definitely think the amount of food that I eat nowadays is a lot more than it used to be. Your boy can eat. A lot of damage here, so we'll have to throw the spinning uh, Searing Doom on me. Although I feel like the Searing Doom right on top of your Domium will do a lot of damage to you. Jesus, that did like 100 damage. 100 to 200 damage. I suppose in the grand scheme it's not too much. In the grand scheme of things, it's too bad. Oh, the Medusa's right here. That's so bad. I feel like if, as long as we're still doing what we're doing here, like, all the range of stuff is over there. We have the shades, we've got run range there, we've got the shades somewhere here, so I'm actually confident moving up. I don't care about the Marauders. I know it sounds really bad, but I really don't care about the Marauders. They can tank all that. Because I need to be in a melee blob fight, right? Okay, I can't go over there if I do that. That's suicide. Okay, let's go kill the Bleak Swords. As the Opera Vampire Coast Lord, um, what's she called? Silostra. Silostra's cool. I like Silostra a lot. Okay, this actually goes pretty hard. But I have to go, I've got to figure out where it would be useful. Because surely coming down from a barrier will take them a long time. If any of them are coming through this, this here, I might also do it. One moment apocalypse. Well, the good thing about her is that you can... Wait, who's shooting me? Why am I seeing a, a line that's attacking me? Are they just the Blake Swords attacking me? Okay. God, Daniel is actually printing off value here. I'm surprised. Marauders are tanking all that they need to. I don't want any of my Chaos Warriors taking the damage. My barrier of these guys have recovered. I believe these are considered, by default, um, actual ranged missile attacks, so... I'm not too worried about moving up my Chaos Warriors, especially since they'll tank the road to it. Pull up my, uh, the Severed Claws now. We've done almost 20 minutes now. Uh, I need to look for better value. Like, Malice is on level 6, but just by sitting, sitting back and doing nothing. Why, well, he doesn't even have his mount! That's how underleveled the AI is right now. He doesn't even have his mount. But yeah, the best thing about Celestra is, against Demon Factions, you put her on the, the Crab. 
against non demon factions, you, you don't you, you make sure she's ethereal. Very strong. Yeah, it's sad that she died on her way to um, see the Phoenix King. Big sad. That's how she died. It'd be nice to get to the, the Zinchian bolts, probably would go hard, but all I need to do is get my aspiring champions over, and then we'll uh, eventually trickle away. Okay, I can see the regen now. So we've regened about 50% of our health. Which is good to know. Just means I need to be a little bit more careful. Like, the Cold One Knight should die, especially if we lose him. You wish to be doing this shooting at Daniel? I don't. I definitely don't, Monster Chief. Better than has with a sword. Nice, dude. We really need to get to a position where we stop being shot at with these guys, recover the barrier, and then let them fight with the barrier HP. 998. We've lost two, unfortunately. Wait, how did these guys lose health? Yeah, how did y'all lose... Oh, the Mortis engine, you came too close. Look at this double Mortis Engine action. It's crazy how fast we're murdering them. Alright, let's let these guys replenish their barrier. Uh, animal movement. And hopefully they'll deal with the Cold One Knights alongside the, the Master here. It's a shame we're not wearing the other armor that gives us um, War Tape. We'd have had 20% War Tape from it by now. The barrier's replenishing. God, it takes so long now. It's kind of wild how long it takes. It is kind of wild how long it takes now. Uh, so, any inventory, Daniel should be able to uh, look at how many we just threw off and killed there. That's crazy. I think we've killed the majority, like a lot of the army already. Like 700. Uh, we've killed probably like six, seven, eight stacks of units right now. Roughly. Oh my god, you rascals. These dread spears. You little rascals. They were supposed to be recovering their health. I wanted them to recover their barrier hit points. We can play with our barrier here, though. I don't mind that. I'm actually going to land before I charge in here. Otherwise, there's a lot higher of a risk of Daniel getting stuck. I might just, I'm actually going to ignore charging and just put him here. That goes way harder. A lot less entities will hit him at the same time. Yet they double Mortis Engine. God, it's so much damage. This is the goal now, pretty much. Just leverage my barrier of these, these guys here. And then just basically put Daniel into a position where he can thrive. Because this is one of the mistakes that people do quite a lot. Is that they would have just sent Daniel into melee here. And he would have taken a lot more damage, right? If I sent him towards these here, he'd have been surrounded by a lot of entities. And he'd have taken a good chunk of damage. But instead of just walking him in, not taking his charge bonus, making him put into a lot more units, he's still providing the value we're looking for, right? He's still putting the Mortis Engine down, he's still doing what I need him to do. So, he's doing all the value we're looking for anyway. All the value things that we need from him, he's doing. So, as long as I'm being hit by as little as possible, I'm happy. I would imagine the Terror Routed. We're getting close to it. Yep, Terror Routed, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Um, okay, so what we'll probably do is pull the, uh, the Spiring Champions back. No one's gone on the walls, which is huge. Nobody went towards the walls, which means we won't have any annoying uh, thing where they'll try and climb the walls. Um, goal is, as soon as they've got the barrier a little bit further back, let's move up now. We'll actually capture this gatehouse. Uh, it's usually a pretty good one to take. So we're going to replenish to 100%. I need them to be standing still. Do they have reflective charge? They do. So as long as they're bracing. I suspect the cold ones would probably want to throw, throw hands here, but we'll see. Put them here. So as long as you see above, like on their portrait, you can see that they'll be braced. I believe, yeah, there you go. Bracing. Right, the shield right there. That's them bracing, right? So that's that means they would reflect the damage. The master going in, I'm fine with as well. That works too. He's going to get absolutely smoked. He will get absolutely smoked here. Uh, that's a huge one. Uh, let's go flying again. Let's check the Cold One Knights out. 
I definitely think there's value in trying to cycle charge at the master here. Um, and potentially throwing a Searing Doom right here to apply the metal shifting bonuses from a damage perspective. As I'll pull those guys out. So I'm going to paying attention to the cavalry. Okay, it looks like the cavalry is going to try and come in here, but I'm going to look for the charge here. Okay, they're not. Because I can do a lot of damage here. Especially since a lot of the damage will be splashed. Good hit. We're healing as well. Once one, once another hit comes through, I'm going to run away. Okay, we'll run away now. Cavalry's coming over as well. Let's get Daniel out. I wish this didn't didn't do friendly fire. So we, since we uh, we landed him, we actually can do damage here, and then we're going to do searing doom here. It might force them to run away, which would be huge because they'll do a lot less damage to us. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get really really nice uh, damage propositions from our magic right now, and then we're just looking to break down the battle uh, into simplified victory conditions for us here. Uh, we've taken the walls fully, so now my inventory can move up. Uh, let's look at their leadership situation. Let's charge from behind again. So let's do the same thing to these uh, dudes. I don't believe they have terror. No, they don't. So it means we can actually indeed uh, route them. Or rampage them. Excuse me. Terror route them. Uh, so that's what we're going to look to do now. Uh, we can see this Scourge run on chariot here. That actually doesn't make me very happy. That makes me pretty unhappy, actually. Because that's going to be a lot of damage to these guys. How am I going to deal with them? Especially the Medusas. We need to kill the Medusas before the Medusa starts hitting our inventory, honestly. I would love it if I could give these guys some kind of healing. Maybe just throw this down here, see what they do. It's not going to do a lot of damage, but it's going to reposition them. And that's what we're going to look for. Either they run forward or run backwards. They run backwards like that. I'm fine with that. So ironically enough, the Medusa will kick our ass in melee. So Daniel can't do anything in melee there. Okay, Bane's getting his butt kicked. It's good. Sparring Chambers are doing exactly what we need them to do. Uh, we're going to move... The only problem is if I try and move through the middle... Like, if I try and leverage uh, the gate opening now, I think we'll struggle. I'm going to charge back in. One little cheeky uh, Searing Doom there. We're, we're, we're trying to play close attention to our spells as well. Because uh, one of the biggest things you got to remember is the more damage my Aspiring Champions take... Ooh, the Medusa's right there. I have to be very careful with this charge. I'm just going to try and tear her out. Reduce the damage that we're taking here. Because I can't go into melee into the, into the Medusa. There's no way. Okay, we see the, see the attacks coming through. I honestly think a lot of friendly fire came from that. I think a lot of friendly fire came with that. Uh, let's send the first wave into the Marauders. The Marauders will be my first, uh, first wave. Pull out them, uh, let's pull out the aspiring champions now. They've done their job. I'm going to need them as well. I want their barrier to replenish. How much HP you got with it? 500. Might as well. Might as well pull them out. Let's get the Marauders in. Let's just take control of this side of the battlefield. Ooh, really silly by me. Let's move away from that. Ah, the Moose is running away. Is there a hero in this fight? Or has he run away? Where is he? Did he run away? Oh, he's there. We probably could have attacked him there. Or looked for something there. So the first wave is going to be the Marauders here. Just going to look to fight whatever whatever I can, really. Heroes dealt with. They've got one more high tier cavalry there, which I'm okay with. Barriers getting replenished here again. I, I kind of put them in for a little bit longer. So I can't hear her doing. Surveying the battlefield. He's not going to be useful yet. He He's my malice killer. He's going to be my malice killer, most likely. So let's actually uh, pull him with a few of you boys. I don't, I don't think pulling every single one of them in there is going to be a good idea. Because then I can survey exactly what needs to be done. And if I can get blobs off. So we've actually pretty much capped out healing on Daniel here. Um... We've thinned a lot of their units down. Pull you up. We actually have a lot of value we can get from this dude. Now, due to the way that they're actually playing this fight, I'm going to send in more Marauders. I'm actually going to send them all in. 
They've not repositioned these archers. They've moved the Medusa away for whatever reason and moved the scourged uh, runner chariots away. Uh, as to the logic, I don't know. Uh, but I will take any blessing I can get when I get it. From a tower perspective, I want to try and avoid taking the towers, mainly because of the fact that... Uh, oh no, it's a one-time builder, isn't it? I think, typically speaking, the AI doesn't actually build towers high tier anymore. They used to, on the second iteration of building them, build them to a higher tier, but now it seems that they don't. I think I'm not opposed to a bombardment here. Uh, we have very little availability of anti-large. Let's pull these sparring chambers back up because they've recovered their barrier. Looking to shoot my mage. Let's do a uh, Uno reverse card on that one. And say, if you're looking to shoot me, I'm going to shoot you. Ask and ye shall receive. Uh, and then probably just keep uh, Searing Doom now. I think Searing Doom on repeat uh, over the uh, over this way is going to be a good idea. Uh, is there any benefits that I can give? Any buffs? Anything like that? No, I think it's the Blood Leathers that are um, the Lords that can give AoE heat bonuses as well. Let's just take a breakdown of what we can see so far. Yep, yeah, happy with this. I don't know. I'm not sure about you guys, but I feel like the AI's overall ability within Sieges has gotten worse. I just feel like the CJ AI has gotten worse. I don't know why. In this patch. Like, I am dissecting them up so easily here. Okay, the Medusa coming over is a bit of a, uh, a damning situation to the plans. So we cast over here or there. Uh, I think probably here, actually. What is this Medusa doing? I'm really confused at this Medusa. Well, this hair is crazy. Yeah, let's move over here. Tank the tree. Use the trees to tank. Overcast this bad boy. Once we've dealt with this line, we push up. We should be able to do it like this. Sparring champions need to move this way. Reduce is shooting Daniel, but the missile the way the missiles work is they're gonna miss. Majority of the missiles will miss because of the way Ooh, we just change targets now. Yeah, let's free move and retransition our positioning. We can't afford any mistakes here. I'm gonna bait the Medusa to shoot us again on this side. I really need to try and squeeze through. Thank you. Push him. Alright, let's have a look here. Uh, Kansas Baby or something like that. Nice run, the Medusa. Let's move up. Let's see what the AI is doing again. I think that's a waste of a cast. I think that's a waste of a cast, unfortunately, that. But from a value perspective, we've got a we're very much in this element now. So as long as we're looking for the value, looking for good shots and good good situations, we should be okay. I'm just a bit afraid of the Medusa now, as the Medusa is being very slippery away from us here. Uh, do I want to charge into the Medusa briefly here? No, I'm gonna get crushed if I do. I just need somebody to just get onto the Medusa. Force the Medusa in melee. Dramatically changes the outcome of this battle. Especially since we can really do some damage. Nice. We're on the Medusa now. Big. Okay. That definitely changes things. Cast into here. Malice is moving over, but... Malice is not too much of a worry now. This Medusa is a slippery bugger. Slippery little rascal. It's running away. There's no more magic available. Uh, there's, yeah, there's literally no more magic available to them, so it's kind of confusing why. We'll pull back. So if the Medusa is giving us an opportunity to breathe, I will not oppose to it. Cold Warriors looking to stack up Hellblade, so especially if we can get that Hellblade stacked before we start attacking Malice, that'd be huge. 
These guys are so annoying, but they're uh, they're not too worried. Not too worried about them. Especially since we got a lot of really nice value situations here. I'm sad that Malice is not on his mount. My only problem now is I've actually got too many units committed to here. This sounds really cringe, but probably the smartest thing I can do is get Malice to transform and then put my wall, put all my units on the wall and run away from him, potentially. But then again, in the same light... Oh, look at the terror coming in huge here. This is the terror. This is the Nurgle corruption stuff coming in now. I'm going to try and cycle charge into him now. I think I can probably get away with it. Entity on entity contact within, um, like, massive blobs is actually relatively weak. I'm a lot of should be close, right? You'd think so. You would definitely think so, but there's still a couple of good units here. Nice. Really big hit there. Let's take advantage of that situation and try and run away and then come back in and attack Malice. Because if I can keep knocking him down, that is huge. Because he's, he's not mounted, right? If he was mounted, I'd have a hard time doing this. I'm going to sort of play around with him a bit. You, oh my god, that was a such a good sequencing of events there. There's a, there actually is a situation where if we can get him low enough before he transforms, we might just amulose awesome. him. I've done that myself before quite a few times. Ooh, I'm, I'm probably going to get hit here, so let's move away from that. Yeah, didn't seem like a good idea. I think if we can get Malice low enough, it should be okay. Beautiful hit there. Beautiful hit there. Okay, he's transforming now, I think. Yep. Well, let's let him die then. Get away from him. He will crumble. He doesn't even have his weapon. What is the AI doing? Hang on. Hang on. I'm so confused at what's happened here. Obviously, he's not someone I can fight, really, so I'll, I'll just keep doing this. Terror rubbing here. Beautiful hits. I don't want to stack up too much. If I stack too much, no bueno. And the thing is, we can trickle him down. We can legit trickle him down here. We have no reason to, to rush this. We have no reason to pressure too much. Uh, and we'll just wait for better value stacks now. And I think, uh, jo this is, who is this? This is Jimbo, yeah. Jimbo, good hit by Jimbo there, though. I'm gonna let Jimbo go for it a little bit. Yeah, pull him out now. Okay, let's take advantage of moving this way, then. Probably go for another swing in a second, like so. Ooh, that stack is even, um, small lords, which I guess it makes sense. Let's get all the, uh, all the inventory back onto him. And pull Jimbo back in there because obviously it's freebie. Does Daniel AoE effect work if he's uh, mid air? Oh, he needs to fight. He needs to fight, buddy. Yeah, good question. He, need, he needs to be in combat. It's a classic Mortis engine effect. He, he needs to be in combat. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, Jimbo's going to stay in here for one more swing. Okay, good enough for me. Unless Malice starts healing too much. Nah, he's not healing anywhere near enough. Let's get Daniel in there. Get, give Jimbo one more opportunity. Go on, Daniel. Oh, would be superhero action. Would be sick if he just pops him off here. Boom! Malice duck play. Fetishes beneath Daniel's boot. I mean, low key, how is this not Amulos bonus, though? Like, if we're actually being honest with ourselves, how is this not Amulos bonus? Like, if we're all being really honest with each other, how is this not Amalos Bonus? I guess the Medusa? But the Medusa's an anti-large killer. Let's move over. Play Valkyrie campaign, Pino Rot? Nice, dude. Have a great campaign, my friend. The, the AI is actually using the Medusa really well, annoyingly. It is using him really well. Dude, this Medusa damage is insane. Melee is uh, anti large it is indeed. Nice. Just need to get the aspiring champions on him. Can I shoot from here? 
Oh, she's doomed now. Okay, here's the shades. We found the shades. Found the shades, boys. The Medusa sucks in melee, so I wouldn't expect her to survive for very long. No, don't let her get out. Don't let her out. Don't let her out. We cannot let her get out from it. Uh oh. Rut rail. Is there any towers shooting us here? Two towers. Move one person over. I mean, we're regenerating barrier again, so I don't, I'm, not have, I'm not too annoyed with that. My hero needs to shoot where possible. God, the Medusa. I'm fine with that. Let's just move over to here. I think Shades. Eh, they have reasonably good melee stat line in fairness to them. Let me just go towards and ensure we're doing like that. Those towers are so bad. Everyone apart from you keep meleeing here. Maybe there's just a lot of range units that I'm just not seeing. It is a genuinely a real possibility. But now we've got all the Cold Warriors that we can uh, put a lot of trust into. You know, walking up and beating things up. Um, your anti-large shot, so I do want to be careful with the Scourge Runners in general. I think we've pretty much gotten everything into uh, a situation where it's going to be useful, hopefully. That is the goal. Caught these drag shards. This Medusa is like god tier right now. Like, it's it's using all of its movement advantage so well. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to put you into melee mode because it's going to be easy to control. The AI is doing really good at skirmishing in this respect. Just trying to take away these towers. I think Jimbo should be fine. I can recruit another lord anyway. Uh, another hero. And we'll name him Jimbo again in his honor. Okay, terrorizing these guys. Uh, is this a barrier controlled by this? Uh, I don't think so. That one's controlling it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Owen, thanks for the 34 months. Can you use the army stuff as well? Uh, if you want. Yeah, I'm not going to get a lot of value from the army stuff right now, though. Get Terror to you again. Boom! I've lost bonus, baby! And we get a victory KFC! Hmm. What a beauty. I mean... That was long-winded, but it was the only victory condition that I had. I think I had to play towards what made me win. And that was it. Great battle. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Corn fried chaos. Love that. Also, ironically, they sent me a really small fruit shoot. Takes me back to my childhood. I used to love drinking fruit shoots when I was younger. I mean, it was it was interesting back in the day, right? When I was a kid, if I went outside, right? Uh, I could say to my mum, you know, I'm going outside. And she'd be like, chill, go outside and do your thing. And I could be like out of the house for like all day. Maybe an entire day, you know. Come back for a cheeky fruit shoot. Back at it again. This is going to be Zinchin because we need it for... Um, The two uh, legendary heroes. Demon Prince. How do we need this? Corn generated. Corn glory generated five is quite nice. Running on the streets with an anarchy? Yeah, I mean, nowadays I feel like you can't even go outside. Like back in the day, health and safety wasn't a thing when I was a kid. It really wasn't. Health and safety was not a thing. 
It was like some kid just got mauled on the on the park. But yeah, they'll be right. They'll be right. How much sugar? Um. Like four grams. Four grams of sugar, not a lot. Hmm. Per hundred mil? No, that's that's in total. It's only two hundred mil. It's like two grams per hundred mil. I'm gonna get great sorcerer out to go to uh, knowing diplomat. Nice. Uh, we're going to go into Physical Resistance and then Foe Seeker. We're going to go Replenish Troop and Replenish Troop. As we need the Replenishment. Now, I don't know how this works, but... So, two Blood Elders, a Corn thingy against this. Yeah, just a, just a Lord here is fine. Uh, probably a Death Mage as well. And just in case, we'll put Pink in there. Do you know what I mean? Just in case. More plastic than juice eventually? Yeah. It's shrinkflation, right? Shrinkflation be real, boys. No little skill regen yet? Not yet, no. Not needed. Don't need it yet. It's only 6% for my army. I don't need it. I'd rather just use the hero that I've been given. The hero I've been given is going to give me more value than this one. And I don't want to go to Nurgle just yet. Like, I don't need to go into Nurgle. You only do that if you need the replenishment, but we've got the hero for it anyway. You gotta roll with the punches, Dark. You gotta roll with the punches. What might have been useful previously is now not as useful, right? You've always gotta to remember to transition where possible into the things that are actually the strongest. Wait, why is this a. Oh, it's telling me I've got teleport stance now. Wow, Wolf Rickles all the way over here. Rog, I need to get I need you to get your act together, bud. I need him to get his act together a bit here. Mm. Mini Philip, that's good. Man, KFC is so good. Right. So our economy is going to get pretty hit uh, due to the fact that this is going away, but should be should be fine for now. Hey, rain time, good to see you, buddy. And uh, Fida, thanks for the follow, buddy. And rain time, the sky's up. <laughs> Got him. We have five guys. We do indeed, Doc. We do indeed. Hmm. I don't think we need this guy just yet. The ceiling's up. God damn it. The Uno reverse card is real. The other side of the world? What, are you an Aussie? Brain time. Alright. I'm very happy with how this campaign's going. I'm gonna name him Harry Hammer. Who knows? Imagine having a kid and being a streamer, and then like auctioning your name from Bangladesh. Yo, Merk, welcome in. Greetings from the UK. Like, do you think, what's the odds of me having a kid and then auctioning off the name of that child and it actually being a good name? And not like, I don't know, 69 Pussy Marijuana or something. I have a hard time believing that the name would be serious. Hey, Greckle. Oh, Greckle. Gonna be gonna be trying to focus on the voice line tomorrow. 
I don't have anything going on. So the voice line stuff I'm going to try my best to focus on. I'm not recruiting anything anymore, so we'll do pillage. I feel like I can kind of trust you guys a little bit. Shadow boost, person name sucks. Oh, absolutely. I would never do it myself. I only speak in a hypothetical course. I feel like most of you guys would probably name thing name it at least relatively okay. Like, okay. If I was going to have a kid, if it was a boy, what would you guys name it? What would you guys name uh, a boy? You'd name it Gork or Mork? Cal Friends? Prince and Emperor? Okay. You'd name it Archeon? Archeon's not a terrible name. Larry. I don't mind Larry. It's a good name. Oh my god. I'm called Harry. Have a kid called Larry. And then have another kid called Barry. Oh, that'd be sick. That'd be so good. Battle be but better? Probably. As a, as a parent, surely you should always want your child to surpass you. It was like what Ragnar wanted. Gary as well, true, 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 true. This world will burn. Jesus Christ, this garrison's huge. Why is this garrison so big? Well, I'm complaining. Right, tier 4 coming up there. Tier 4 and we can get... Uh... Wait, shoot. Don't we need... Um... We need Zinchi and Chaos Warriors, don't we? Yeah, that's for uh, the Blue Scribes. Ah, yeah, we need this. So let's build that instead. We'll go into this instead and get Chaos Warriors on my secondary army. Man. Do I want to attack this guy now over here? Yeah, why not? I can reach. We might as well. If you can run away... Oh, thank God. I was going to say. I would be fuming if this guy ran away. That should be uh, Malice fully dead now. That should be Malice Dunzo. Big. Huge. Huge, 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 huge. Now, is there an argument for me to take advantage of the situation and just go all the way west? Would I go all the way west now? I'm going to go to the Great Sorcerer because I think it's more important for me to have a constant stream of Winds and Magics, especially with a Mage in my army. We're going towards Knowing Diplomat as an FYI. I think Knowing Diplomat is going to be the most valuable here. All right, Madman can jog on. We don't need him anymore. I'm going to force Max back into the settlement just so we can replenish properly. Plus, the good news is if you're going up into a port, it helps a lot. Annoyingly, I'm not going to be able to do many quests. I would love it if you had the actual quest battles you could teleport to. It would help so much sustaining your bloodletting. You're always like, hey, croc guy. Croc guy, you're a wizard, don't worry. You're never late nor early. You were, you were arrived precisely when you're needed. Did you 30 wins of magic constantly, by the way? Oh, really? Jesus. Oh, my, it does. All right. This is garbage. Hmm. Nah, it's still fine. I would love it if um, if you if you do magic, like if you use a hundred wins of magic in a battle, you then it goes all the way down to zero, and you got to replenish your wins of magic up again. I I think it'd be really interesting to make and then just make magic stronger. I think it'd be really cool, because that's what happens in lore, right? If a mage in lore uses magic, they have to channel. They have to channel the winds again. They can't just keep casting spells out, like um, machine gun spells. They have to, like... There's a cooldown period, like men have. There's a cooldown period, you know? Hmm. 
Bait LC Blankies Bait LC Blankies Bait LC Blankies Bait LC Blankies. Much love, Cargan. Hope you're doing wonderful, my friend. Thank you for going above and beyond as always. What we're referring to? I'm, I'm not repeating myself, Monster Chief. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> what well, there's uh, many garrison buildings we can't hit. We should actually be able to sustain another army soon, boys. We can actually sustain another army soon. This is huge. Also, sorry for eating, folks. I'm starving. Typically, don't like eating. On stream, because I know it's not. I know some people are not a fan. What units do you like the most with Daniel in another game? Probably Call Marauders. Call Marauders, 100%. Oh, I can put it up a little bit. Hmm. What language are you speaking, Oleg? Like? <clears throat> the language of the gods. Shibberish? Okay, that was. I think you just. Are you guys in cahoots? Are you guys DMing, DMing each other? Speaking uh, English. More than mortal after all, it's true. Although my gameplay makes you think that I am. I have ascended to godhood, but uh, I am immortal after all. This guy's going to be the second army. Uh, second army. <laughs> These guys I'm still at war with. But weirdly enough, Astrogoth isn't at war with them yet. Right. Ah, it's cool the variation of units you can recruit when you have uh, multiple different tiers. We just need to tier 4, then we're going to get uh, uh, Air Cold and the Blue Scribes, and that'll be absolutely vibes. But yeah, Overlord, the Marauders are too good. They're so strong. It's crazy. Right. Would any of you guys like a bite of my wrap? I always love it when people use that emote for it. Always makes me laugh without fail. <laughs> right, so. <clears throat> KFC and a kebab wrap. That would go hard, honestly. Jiro's is so good. Jiro's go hard. Right, as long as Throg wins that, we're going to be fine. So, you're dead. We're going to go kill these two. Yeah, let's go to the west and kill those. I might have to fight Warflick at the same time, which is unfortunate, but if, it, if it needs must. Don't want to replace these as well. I definitely need more corn glory because if I can get a little bit more corn glory, it'll allow me to um, get this bad boy here. Bunch of his inventory plus ten, so good. Demon I think I'm gonna rent all the way over here. 
as I'm going to need to because I need to recover my bloodletting. Yeah, progress delays. Well, it'll delay and go back into bloodletting over here, but it should be fine. Because you can see right now, I'm, I'm getting another 35 from bloodletting. Need to get this guy going as well. Then just some point for the teleport. We've already got it, lad. We've already gotten it. Uh, you need 770 glory and we've already gotten it. It's because we, we did it on purpose to... Because we took this settlement here. We took Malice's settlement. This guy is unfortunately going to be my battering ram, so I do apologize to the Crimson Skull. It's a broken stance, it really is. Especially with my army composition. A melee-based composition with an ambushes are incredible. Ranged armies are actually relatively weaker. Typically speaking, well, it depends on how you fight it, right? Depends on how you fight it. Ranged compositions can struggle in uh, melee. Does charge to, uh, bonus damage increase versus, uh, uh, increase the bonus versus large in inventory? That's a really interesting question, Monsters, but no. Charge has no implication to that. There's no amplification to the bonuses of entry. It would merely be an additive towards your um, charge bonus additions. It's a really good question. No one's asked me that. It's a really cool question, actually. It's a really uh, interesting way of looking at it. But now you just get the flat bonuses from each. Hmm. Hmm. Right, we really need to get into a fight next turn. When is it? Two turns. Yeah, from my understanding, it's like, um... So if you go all the way to the top, two turns it decays to here, two turns it decays to here, and then two turns it decays to here. So it does take a long time to get rid of all your bloodletting. Uh, the Crystal Spire is being tier 4 does nothing for me. Let's upgrade the Volcano's Heart. Let's get a better uh, overall settlement. This is my main province. This is the one we're going to upgrade to tier 4, I think. Although... Minotaurs of Corn would go pretty hard, though. Yeah, Minotaurs of Corn would go pretty hard, but Undivided gets us that anyway. As long as you have the relevant settlement to uh, recruit them, Undivided does it all. If Winds of Magic is 10%. Wow, this is actually a lot of money. God damn. Wait, is there any more milli money billings that give additional amplifications? No. If only. I'd read the mechanics for Daniel, for each god. Number one's Corn, Nurgle, Zinch, and Sunesh. I would rate it for me. For me, it's undivided, corn, Nurgle, Zinch, Sunesh. From a dedication perspective, from like you're fully dedicating them. That's a, that's my additional. That's my thoughts. Let's see if I can finish this. I'm gonna try to do a map domination. If you guys are enjoying it. Mm -mm. Yeah, we'll play around with it, Dark, when we're fighting somebody. Yeah, Bungie, it's good to see you. Yo, yeah, Moose, playing a cool campaign. Is that like a weird campaign? How so, uh, Moose? It's not even the sedu uh, sed uh, seduction overlord, it's the fact that their units are garbage. It's the unfortunate tale of they've been nerfed too much. Right, against a corn dude. That actually isn't bad at all. Blissful Rapture is really goddamn good for my army. There is a world where I could start transitioning towards being a mage. But I really don't think I need to yet. This is actually pretty good. I lose a lot of armor though. We gained the ward save. I would argue it probably becomes tanky from that. I like the idea of using that. 
True of Corruption is too good not to. Zinch, funny enough, has one of the best early game uh, weapons. Which you wouldn't think they would. We'll use this one. Anything we can do to amplify our melee uh, and piercing, we will do. Because once we get to the point where... Where is it? That's a really good armor piercing one. It takes a bloody age to get to. It sucks that Corn really doesn't have any weapons. I don't know why. You'd think out of everybody to have a weapon, Corn would be the one. Like, where's the logic in that? Like, you have to dedicate towards getting cool weapons? Like, come on. It's like, come on. Undivided campaign? Yeah, go for it, man. I'm telling you, Undivided is strong. Uh, we need the Heavy Gauntlet's right arm and we can start recruiting things at really high rank. Do anyone can declare war on you through? No. Undivided Daniel's best annual? By a long way. Undivided Daniel is very strong. There's very few factions that are as strong as Undivided Daniel. If I'm going to be honest. Plays guy in release. Oh, Daniel on release was terrible. I'll be honest. I hated Daniel on release. He was so bad. Nice. Mage comes in. Don't even have to uh, force march. I think we lose the melee fight against their lord. But we can just utilize rancid visitations. Wait. Their marauders of corn look different. Ah, we don't get the shielded variant. Makes sense. Wow, no losses, but I can't risk it. I can't risk auto resolving and then all of a sudden being in a really bad spot afterwards. Is Mage Daniel a thing? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, one of my first campaigns I did with him recently, when I dedicated to Zin, she was strong. The Zinch dedication that I did, uh, first stream I did for Daniel, was was pretty good. Was pretty good. <laughs> when in doubt, catch the arrows with your skull. It's a great idea. The other gods aside from Team Second Corn Monsters. Hmm. Corn honestly can be pretty good. We really need to wait for our mage, honestly. What I can do, though, is just walk up. Corn towers are typically very, very... Why is it a Sunesh tower? <clears throat> I was going to say, corn towers suck, uh, like, have awful accuracy. Why is it Suneshi? What determines what the, what the faction's towers are going to be? Because Daniel's main settlement is Nurgle. I actually am not sure. I generally don't know the answer to that. Anyone in the chat know? What determines the towers to be what they are? Oh crap, I'm getting sacked this guy. Time to run! We might be able to bait him over, actually. So, come on, bud. It was just the last settlement. Oh, is it just the fact that it's it's whoever the settlement was owned by? But equally, if you're, if you're an auditized faction and you take it, it doesn't remain the... It doesn't remain like that, right? So it's all about what, what it used to be. But it doesn't work that way for, like, all the times, right? I really want to bait this hero out. Here we go. Oh my god, he just slapped. How the hell did he hit me from up there? I was miles away from him. Uh, game? Seems a little rigged to me. Seems a little rigged. 
Not with certain factions? Ah, makes sense then. <laughs> he screamed so loud. Took a page out of Colton's book, but the other way around. This is mad. It's like the AI knows what I'm going to do. It's like they're learning before I'm even doing it myself. Right, the unfortunate thing for the AI here is I'm just going to cheese the crap out of them. With random visitations, but, you know. He'll be a good spot, I'm sure. That's <clears throat> why so having mages and things like that is so important in the early game. Come here, you little nerd. How do you like your stream? Just hanging out is more than enough, my friend. Having the pleasure of speaking to you fine folks is more than enough for me. Uh, question for you guys: Where can I buy the uh, Where can I buy the Law of Corn? Is there a specific tome you guys recommend? It's a tough question. I would honestly recommend reading Valkyrie books. Having a look at the Valkyrie books will be a good starting point, I would assume. Depends on what you're looking for, but yeah, Valkyrie books are really goddamn good. And I'd recommend as a starter. I'm going to throw out healing. If he hits me, it'll be half, though. That's the only problem. Oh, I'm already under fire. If I get fire attacks on me, then it'll reduce my healing by a lot. Alright, Ren's visitations. He's a lord as well, so it'll count as uh, glory points too. Wait, what's he doing? Don't go for my hero, you little rat. Fight me like a man! Oosh. I think he wins those. And by he, I mean me. Because we're him. We are him. Honestly, the uh, fascination would go really hard here. Okay. Because it means I can uh, rampage him and probably lure him away. Wait, can he not be rampaged? It says he's rampaging, but that doesn't look like a rampage to me. Not sure about that one, Chief. You little rat. How goddamn dare you. If he kills my hero, I'm going to be so sad. That would be cause for crying on stream, actually. Haven't cried on stream before? That could be a catalyst. That could definitely be a catalyst. Lose losing this lord would be so bad. It would be so unbelievably bad. Okay, good. Now he's dead. Right, good. Right, folks. How to move up. He battered my mage? Yeah. I mean, he has an incredible stat line, right? And Thunderbolt, thanks for following me. Right, now we can just go in blobs now. I'm pretty confident Daniel can sit in these blobs for a reasonable chunk of time. Uh, and then just start getting value off. He's almost heal capped. Yeah, Exalted Bloodthirsters are not, uh, nothing to laugh at, man. They are incredibly powerful. Corvus, hello Demon Prince from another hold. Hello Dally from another hold, Corvus, it's good to see ya. How fares it, ya? Remember, Corvus, you know shame your ancestors, Dally with the Mm -hmm. Nice, my unit should be able to come up and do some value now. The Sunesh Towers are not that good. If 
Thankfully, I'm not worried about him. Itching for a moment. You're in there, dog. Don't worry. We're sending you in there. Was the towers are scary? What do you guys think? Which faction owns the strongest towers? Like, on the seat, on the walls? I would honestly say Agilism and towers are incredibly good as well. What towers do y'all think the best? Nurgle. Nurgle towers are goddamn accurate in fairness. Hmm. Skaven are really good too. Hmm. It's true. Corn does not care where the blood flows, my friends. Corn does simply not care where the blood flows. The blood flowing from either my side or their side. It is still a victory in Corn's eyes. I'm trying to go for the walls, honestly. Climbing the ladders will just be janky. Beautiful. How are they not terror outed? Sometimes I'm really confused about how terror works. And other times I like I know exactly how it works, and sometimes seeing interactions like that, I'm like, how the hell does it work? Because entity on entity contact should be the catalyst to make them terror routed, but that was entity on entity contact, and it didn't. Sometimes the mechanics of this game are wonderful and beautiful, and a mystery. Hmm. All right. I've officially finished eating for now. That KFC was... was damn good. Scaven Towers also means Warp on the Menace? Yeah. Scaven Towers go so hard, man. Alright guys, do me a favor. Type one in the chat if you think Skaven are OP. Type one in the chat if you think Skaven are OP. Specifically Ichaclaw. Do you guys think Skaven are OP? Type one in the chat. Two of them playing them. Classic. Interesting. Got a quite a, a couple twos here. Point five, yeah. I think um, Warhammer 2 variant of Skaven, my god, they were broken. Nothing was remotely close. Nothing was remotely close to the power levels of Skaven. Absolutely nothing was close. That's because we were playing a different game, right? Skaven was vastly different. They nerfed pretty much most ranged units. Well, not mostly. They nerfed them all. Obviously, Skaven got hit because of it. When someone rats on my matches. Yeah, they're very good at it. Climb rats do a lot of damage, too. One thing that I found really interesting was when I started playing Ichaclaw, right? On the release of Warhammer 3, Immortal Empires, I played a 200... No, I played, excuse me, a 600% turn 3 uh, Ultimate Crisis. And I was completely fine. I was legit completely fine. Because Skaven Blight is so unbelievably well defended. And I did a campaign recently where I legit moved Aegaclaw away from Skaven Blight, and it was actually tough. 
It was actually good fun. It was so much harder. Because I didn't have the agency of Skaven Blight. My still problems far above climb rats is absurd. I think it's because of the fact that you can put them into a position where they are consistently delivering value. And overall, like, if you put them on top of a unit, they'll have easy entity on entity contact. So they chunk them for no reason? Uh, it's not for no reason. Let's break down. Let's go to it. Let me just check something real quick. It's definitely for no reason. You'd be surprised. because they're clan rats. <clears throat> Six uh, AP. So by default, they're doing seven minimum damage, right? A clan rat will do seven damage minimum to anything. No matter how much armor they have. It could have 200 armor. doesn't matter. They're doing seven. Because by default, you have to do one base weapon damage. And you got six armor piercing damage, right? You times that by how many do we have? 160, was it? Where are they again? 160, right? I'm, I'm blind. Yeah, 160. So if if these guys hit relatively consistently across all entities, they'll do about 1,000 damage per rotation of attacks. And I think their attack sequencing is like every 4 seconds or so. But that's not equ equating for the fact that they're attacking into certain units. But most of them will attack into uh, units from behind. So they'll, the melee defense they're attacking against will be like reduced by 75%. It's normally the reason why they can do it. It's because if they're flanking an entity, they'll do they'll have such ease ability of actually doing damage because of the fact that um Yeah, your metal defense is reduced by 75% if you attack from from a flank. And from the side I think it's 50%. So your stat line's a lot less. Elite inventory look a lot strong. Uh, a lot a lot weaker in that regard. But I do agree in that a stubborn of a clan rat should not do as much damage as it does. But it's kind of just the way that the, the, the game's unintended mechanics function that allow it. It's kind of... It's interesting. Clan Rats with Queek? Yeah. Queek is very good. I like the... Uh, if you if you do the uh, the start correctly, with Queek early game, you can take Karak 8 Peaks so fast. You just use Warp Grinders. A mechanism of a mechanic, they are promising what I mean. Oh, 100% lads, 100% agreed. I think there's very few very few things. Like, because you, you got to remember, like, the menace from below, the summons from the, um, the Skaven ma mage, the, the, the priests, the plague priests, seem so weak in comparison for some reason. Like, I feel like that, they, the summons that I do from a mage feel garbage in comparison to the summons that I do from, like, the army ability. I don't know why. It just does. Looking to do a Nurgle Daniel, most likely, or a Danway campaign following TOD. Oh, man, I'm playing Dwarves for sure. Battles he promised, he'd play a Slayer Dwarf. Yeah, I would, I'll actually do, will do a cosplay of a Slayer Dwarf if Malachi McKyson comes in. I promised it and I will deliver. I will deliver if the time comes. I'll do a Slayer Dwarf cosplay. And play the new TOD stuff. If he's in there. And then absolutely destroy my voice, speaking like a dwarf all day. Livestream Dara campaign with 100% dwarf voice? Man, I would lose my voice so fast, unfortunately. I would if my voice wouldn't go very quickly. Some kind of realistic with my whole wig. That's what I do, Helic. That's 100% what I do. For Corn Hero, is the score cross amount better or the bike you're using right now? Uh, bike is for overall utility, right? Getting access into giving your units to totem of endless bloodletting is so goddamn good. Eight melee attack, full leadership from my melee base composition functions very well. Whereas the Skull Crusher specifically is more for a single entity killer. This is an inventory killer. Whereas the mount is more scaled towards being good at killing, you know, um, single entities, right? If you need someone that can kill single entities, you put them on the Skull Crusher. If you're needing someone to kill inventory, you put them on this mount. My natural axe is 100% grade dowling. So why would it hurt to put on? No, it's more like I've got to, you know, you've got to oomph with the diaphragm, you know? 
It's it'd be more my throat that would take the uh, take the beating. Okay, that was that sounded sussy in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, it would be my uh, my vocal cords that would uh, take a bit of a beating. All right, we've pretty much done everything fine here. Well, everything's crumbling. The battle has been concluded. Some really classic fighting here. Basically just leveraging everything that I know is strong about what my faction is currently. And just picking apart the enemy bit by bit. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. You got boy, you boy loves it. You know? Absolutely love it. It's the way to do it, my friends. It's the way to do it. Shave beard if lose. Shave beard if lose? Absolutely bloody not. You guys haven't noticed I trimmed my beard. Kind of disappointed. Kind of a little bit disappointed. None of you guys remember. None, none of you guys recognize I shaved my beard a little bit. Actually, quite a lot. A lot of my beard came off. Uh, a little bit disappointed. No one's like, Bowsy, I love the, love the look. But, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sad about it. You've noticed you didn't say anything? That's a cop-out answer, Monster Chief. You're better than that. That's a cop-out answer. Did you get? Did you order a KFC as well? We've just finished eating it. 7.5k, nice. 6k XP. You didn't ask if you look fat. Do I look fat? Is that? Is, are you trying to insinuate I look fat? Pulling in. You got a chicken sandy? Nice. Nice huge units coming in. So this unit, I'm going to show you. This right here is the best unit in the game. The Festering Stooges, the best unit in the game by a long way. They heal and resurrect themselves. Oh, damn. It's just the way you remind me of how the GF would trap you. Yeah. Stuff like that was always so annoying. It'd be like, you'd say it in a certain way and they'd be like, oh, so I look awful then. It's like, no, didn't say that, but okay, cool. Yeah, I used to have an ex like that. Thankfully, I'm not with her anymore. <laughs> you know, thankfully not with her anymore. Nah, I'm very lucky that my girlfriend's very chill. She's she's one of the boys, you know. She's one of the boys. Although she doesn't like to be referred like that. But fundamentally, she's one of the boys. Do you think Dan will get exclusive items akin to how Zinch's stuff arrived with Mirrors of Madness? Nah, I doubt it. You gotta remember that no one plays Daniel, for the grand for the most part. I would say I need to get the victory condition as Daniel and see how many people have it. I would assume like point something percent of the player base have this achieve have anything regarding Daniel's achievements. I'd be so surprised if many people have played Daniel. I'd be very surprised. I would be very, very surprised. I just think I don't think people would play Daniel, so it's not valuable for them to do so. It's sad but true. It's a sad thing. I mean the game is like they have to make money, right? So the, the all the decisions that they make will be what will make them the most money? And I don't think they'd make much money doing Daniel things. It'd be a, it'd be something where they would have to invest a lot of money and time. Interesting for the slaughter. I actually do like his double mortis engine. I love his, uh, I love his mortis engine elements of him. I think there's no one else like Daniel from a value perspective is probably one of the strongest legendary lords from an inventory killing perspective. I mean, he could be he can be fitted and molded around anything you need him to do, which is the one thing I think is really cool about him. So one thing I think is super dope about Daniel as a faction, like if you need him to do something, he will be able to do it basically. Uh, and that's an un that's a very rare thing to, for a legendary lord to be able to do, right? Very rare. Hmm. I mean, Archeon still bloody loves us. So hopefully he'll vibe out for a little bit while we can completely destroy the, all the west of it. Mm. Got that intel? I mean, Zinch sponsored that flame tentacle set. Yeah. That, I mean, I think, in, like, ha hasn't AMD sponsored quite a lot as well? Which is kind of funny. And then, um... Yeah, it was AMD, did a, quite a few things, and yeah, there's been a, a, a reasonable amount of variance. The insult about the ships and stuff for the trials, I suppose we could get more items. Yeah. Yeah, Inquisitor Hammond, what's up, dude? 
Is this Democracy Manifest? What, am I playing uh, Helldivers right now? We're doing some Helldivers action. I definitely should play more Helldivers. Would you boys want to play Helldivers at some point again? Like, if I stream tomorrow, Bit Cheeky Warhammer, in two, a bit of cheeky action regards to uh, Helldivers again? Because we could get most of the boys on, right? Yeah, we could potentially get the most of the boys on. Wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm down to watch. I'm down, I'm down. Okay. Tomorrow you'll be a work, Monster Chief. F. F have to pay respects for that one. F to pay respects for that one, my man. The reference to that one was a video? Ah, I see. I see. The Aussie video that I remember is the VB long neck. I think it's the one of the, the one of the things I remember. Libu the defecator, yeah, it's just it's just a classic Nurgle name, really. Wow, my army's full HP. Garrison in there. Our economy's actually recovering nicely. This is recovering nicely. I think the Marathi and the county of only fans. I think if anything existed like that in the in Warhammer Fantasy, I would I would assume so. It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe that's like the next generation of Warhammer Fantasy. Instead of Sunesh trying to seduce you through like physical means, they're just trying like throw an only fans on you for money. Man, that would be sheer brain rot. Jesus. The level of brain rot from that, it would be insane. Wait, why am I taking attrition? Buildings in the local area are causing army to suffer losses. Huh? Oh wow, Crimson Lake. Enemy attrition in the region. I did not know that was a thing. Huh. Live and you learn. You live and you learn, my friends. We'll get a secondary arm up and running, probably to deal with the east. Uh, but we just have to be careful, because we need to still grind out more Undivided Glory. We still need to go through Undivided, but we'll see. Then at the Dark Elves economy, they should have given Marathi's faction. Oh my god. Now a mod's going to get created for that, PNRL. A mod is going to get created... Someone's going to figure out how to make OnlyFans for Sunash. It's good. Oh my god. All other lives sometimes I regret speaking. Not sometimes, quite a lot, honestly. Honestly, quite a lot. Right, let's take the settlement. I mean, I think there's really an awful lot of things we can do to heal. Interesting, we got more corn glory. I wonder if it's because it's a corn settlement you get more corn glory. That'd be pretty cool if that works like that. Right. Right, folks. I think your boy is about to hit the hay. So, I'll find a cool streamer. Do you know what? I haven't rated further reading in a long, long, long time. He's a great guy. Sweet. Folks, I hope all of you guys have a fantastic rest of your morning, evening, night, wherever you may be in the world. Thank you so much for uh, for spending your time with me. I do appreciate you guys hanging out. I appreciate each and one of you beautiful, fine folks. 
You guys are all incredible. I know we haven't streamed, you know, a lot in recent times, so I appreciate everyone, um, you know, I appreciate everyone hanging out. And yeah, Chocolate Rain, thanks for the 100 biddies. Have a nice sleep, thanks man. I appreciate everyone hanging Chocolate out. Appreciate Rain you guys being four, great. You cheered. X100. Yeah, I appreciate everyone hanging out. Appreciate everyone being supportive as always. I, like I said, I know I haven't streamed a lot recently, but I do intend on try. I do intend on streaming more consistently uh, as I'm getting used to my job. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the the new job has very much thrown a lot of things out of swing. Uh, so just trying to get back into uh, some form of consistent schedule. Being a degenerate streamer for six months. Uh, and then going into working with a, with a proper structure is hard. <laughs> uh, definitely difficult on your body. Uh, but yeah, take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Thank you for hanging out. And uh, make sure to say hi 